You are listening to the Hello Sport Podcast. What is up, punters and dribblers? Welcome back to another episode of All Talk with Tom and Eddie, Hello Sport Podcast. Um, back for another week. Shout out to the Rugby League Guru for joining us last week. Um, what a legend. And thank you to everyone who's uh, had nice things to say. The Guru's a great man and it was great to have him on. Um, but we go up again this week. Well, we, 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 we continue to go up. We continue to step it up. And there's Ashes Cricket on. Big, big time cricket on right now. Doesn't get bigger than this. Ashes away. It's the holy grail for the men's test side to yeah. get the shockies in England. We haven't done it since 2001. I know we retained last time, but we didn't get that elusive win over there. Stephen O'Keefe breaks it down. This man knows his cricket, punters yep. and dribblers. Knows it inside and out. Tom. Yep. Up, test cricketer for down. Australia. A proud off-spinning wicket taker. Who is, is proud of the fact that he didn't spin it that much but he still took wickets still took wickets and didn't spin that much but he's got some great yarns in this one there's some really really funny yarns obviously we do talk about the ashes this was recorded before the first uh ashes test but we sort of were keeping it pretty you know we weren't sort of asking him really specific sort of like how'd the game go obviously because the game hadn't happened well listen punters and dribblers tom and i are professionals and we kept it evergreen yeah because we know what we're doing yeah. and we're the best in the business. <laughs> now, was that a wrap? Yeah, it was. Uh, um, did you expect it? Maybe you didn't. No, yeah, that was a, look, it was a big, it was a big wrap for ourselves. <laughs> uh, we've wrapped ourselves a deluxe. Um, but Sock, you will probably notice if you've been watching the Ashes, if you haven't, then maybe this isn't for you. But he's been doing um, the Channel 9 stuff when they cut back from a wicket and back in the studio with, uh, with Finchy, Aaron Finch. That's right. Um, but anyway, it was a great yarn. He's a funny man. Very generous of him to come in and give some time for us and for you, the punter and the dribbler. So let's get into it, eh? Stephen O'Keefe. Um, how are you? Are you good? Yes, I'm... Uh, how am I? I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. I've, uh, I'm going around again with the Sixers. Nice. Um, Did you leave Manly? Did someone say you were leaving? Yeah, you I'm left gonna, Manly? Uh, I haven't, haven't, haven't told all of them just yet. We can cut that out. It's out there, yeah. <laughs> No, no, no. It was I'm someone who... Off, it might have been... <laughs> See you later. <laughs> to Hawkesbury. Uh, no, it's been... I'm moving back to Hawkesbury to play... Probably my last year of cricket. My family are getting old. They live out that way. They're getting closer to 70. My sister's married and got two two nieces. And I probably haven't been making as much effort as I should living in Manly. You know, it's quite hard to leave the beach. So yep. playing cricket out, at, out west will, will force my hand a little bit. Training once a week and playing on a Saturday. I'll uh, be forced to go and uh, sit down Hang with the parents. family. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so you, you might um, regret that after yeah, one weekend. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? What have I done? Steve, Steve O'Keefe okay, retired after two weeks of yeah. great cricket. Or, or, uh, he's making a triumphant return to Manly one game <laughs> yeah. into the yeah, season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Boys, yeah. I'm back. I'm back. Yeah. yeah. Go for your Jordan moment. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, I'm going to go and play baseball. I'm gonna suck at it. No, the Keefe rides the bus. <laughs> the, the paddy wagon, more like it. Um, yeah, no, I'm going to go back, uh, play probably. It'll be my last year. But like cricket with the big bash is that the they're just pumping more and more money into it. So mm. someone like myself who you know I bowl thirty overs, I should sit at short forty five and third man. It's like and if they bring in this super sub rule which they did in the IPL, you know, like my role is literally like the picture does in baseball. You know, you bowl yeah. your twenty four and then you get off. I mean, I can do that till I'm ninety. Well, that's <laughs> what I was going to say. With that, but would you then not retire, or are you saying you retire? Yeah, well, from club if cricket? they keep like they just keep throwing the low hanging fruit, I'm going to take it because yeah. I know how hard the real world is. Yeah, yeah, you know, I'm here absolutely. for fucking free, so I, you know, I get out, I get the get the grind. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm selling what, myself to anyone who wants. To <laughs> <laughs> so you won't even have to feel basically. Well. Th- that hasn't come in, but in the IPL they've got super subs. Mm. So they basically they've tried it in cricket with the X Factor uh, in the BBL, but essentially uh, the IPL brought in they could sub anyone. So you could make a hundred, and then just not field. Just really? Go, That's it. Yeah, and then sub in a bowler, so you can play an extra bowler. So it sort of kills okay. the all rounder role, but I think it makes the game more exciting between bat and ball. So you can actually afford to play twelve crickers instead of having a twelfth man. You can play the. The you know, eleven, yeah, but, right, yeah, play twelve, but you know, sub someone in. So if mm. you're three for ten in three overs, you can sub out a bowler, bring another batter in, and strengthen uh, your batting. So interesting, yeah. So the IPL, I mean, is just going from strength to strength. The, the media rights are huge. Teams are, you know, they're adding to their teams. We saw what Cameron Green went for three point something million dollars, insane, three point one five, I think. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. Who's counting? Yeah, <laughs> when he got asked as well, like, what are you going to get? He goes, oh. 
an iPad. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, what a sweet <laughs> kid. <laughs> what a sweet, uh, said, Why am I mocking sweet. that? No, why no, I no, dude. That? Look, yeah. he's sweet, but like get a Ferrari yeah, or something, yeah, dude. Like, come yeah. on. You're going to get another three yeah. million next yeah, time you go. Like, yeah. Get a convertible. Yeah. Get and something get really obnoxious. And just, yeah, that's right. Smoke cigars. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Just come on. Yeah. Go to Vegas and blow it all, mate. You know what I mean? Live a Date a porn star. Exactly. Go full Rodman. Release a sex tape. Have your Rodman moment. That's that's right. <laughs> I'd love to see him at work. I'd love to see him at if work. If it's anything like his cricket. Is he any, he's a bit like... because they, they He's com- a big boy as well. Yeah, 6'6". Six, six. I mean, they're comparing him to, you know, Keith Miller. Or Ricky Ponting was. He's probably one of the great all-rounders to play for Australia. Um, and, you know, he was the... Uh, Keith Miller was the ultimate swordsman as well because ah. he was such a good-looking chap. There's mm. been... You know, sort of plenty of stories. So to make that great comparison with, <laughs> yeah, with yeah. Him, I mean, I, I I watch him and I, I I get turned on by his cricket. He's six six. He bowls a heavy ball. Mm. You know, this mythological heavy ball, which I still haven't worked out in cricket. What is that? Is yeah. that just like a fast? It's ball? just. I think it just means it's fast and okay. hits the bat hard. So eighty five miles, and not only that, he can hit Test century. So this guy's every and he catches him in the gully. Good for like, you using the bloody old system there. Eighty five miles. Yeah. Well, so I've just <laughs> done this. That That's when, it go, when you when you go to England, it turns into miles. They are yeah. miles over there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So no so everything's so and, and and they're not you're not three for hundred and forty, you're hundred and forty for three, or yeah. you know, the, everything's yeah. around the other way. Which I kind of like. I like the little idio synchronicities that the, yeah. the, the cricket in England has, mm. you know. Uh it's a different style. But yeah, so the heavy ball is eighty five plus miles which he can bowl. So he's if I came back as a cricketer, if I wanted to be a cricketer it would be it would be him, highly yeah. paid. You connected the whole time. You bat, you bowl, and then you stand in the gully, and you just take Take these speckies that are just like you know posters. Yes. Mm. Um, But unfortunately for me, I'm 40 and still bowling nude left arm straight breaks. (laughs) It's still getting fucking paid. Well, there you go. Life's not too bad. You were saying now, like if they bring in the sub, then you you know you can play till you're 90. Mm. Is there? Is that bullshit, or do you think you could? (laughs) No, no. (laughs) Honestly, look, we've got Todd Murphy in our squad. And we've had Nathan Lyon, and you know it's it, T20 is sort of an old man's game, but there is a there is a point at which you. I mean, Brad Hogg played till he was forty five. Yeah, certainly a lot fitter than what I am. I mean, I, I I've I, I try to take care of myself, but I also know that you know there's also a world out there that I really want to go and enjoy, and, enjoy and not worry about you know pre seasons and all that. Well, sort how of old was McGill? Uh, he played. He played when our first season of Big Bash, which we won. Because I, I remember him in tears when he won that. Yeah, yeah. So we won that in BBL one in Perth. That was B, that's thirteen years ago. That was his last game of professional cricket. Was that final? Um, and that was that was unreal. You know, was that he, was like was playing with like one of your. He would have been dogs, getting on close him? to forty. I don't know, thirty-nine. Well, 49. how old's Siddle now? He's getting Siddle's on. my age, 38, 39. He's, isn't he, just, he's, he seems like he's just up for it. He's yeah. like over there now. He's playing well, in he's, back in England, county he's, cricket. He's issue, getting it he? done. Jackson Burr's just signed a new deal with New South Wales for two years. So, um, you know, Greg Shippard, the Yoda of cricket coaching, you know, said experience never gets old. And, you know, you have I these older that. guys. <laughs> yeah. Experience well, never gets and old. in sport, with these. T-shirt. Yeah. Like, we build these guys up for so long. And then once you're done, you're done. And, most people, when you leave the game, you're either cut off at the knees or something. You know, it never you never get a fairy tale. You never get to write your own cricket eulogy. Mm. You know, Davey Warner sort of tried to say that. You know, I'm, I'm retiring <laughs> in Sydney. It's like, hang well, on, mate. You've got to get, get, <laughs> you get Stuart Broad's house finger yeah, right yeah, first. Yeah, you might be retiring. <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> yeah. Yeah. Might not be your call, but I am backing him to do well. I think Davey will do well. Um, that 40 was like... 48, I was like, okay. That's refreshing. It was, okay. it was good. It's like, yeah, I'm, we, he's good for it. And I think he is good for it because that was really tough. Um, and there's big questions around the two openers. Not since 1926. Here's some really nerdy wow. cricket stats. Here we go. Have we gone with uh, two guys age of 36 open the batting? So not since, you know, it's nearly 100 years Jeez. since they've had a really old uh, pair. But the thing I like about both of these guys is that they're – They've adapted and grown. Uzi, of course, burst onto the scene with his back-to-back hundreds in Sydney in the last Ashes when we beat them 4-0 in what Stuart Broad calls a void series. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Try well, again. I'd love to have a few vo- I'd like to have a few void nights out of yeah, the state. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Just yeah. mulligans. Like, yeah. no, yeah. no, yeah, no. Yeah, it doesn't count. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> six beers, it doesn't count. It doesn't After count. six beers, that's not me. No. That's, uh, <laughs> yeah. Sorry about sucking boy over there. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think, I think those two will get it done. Like, I, I've never known Davey to not, succeed even since i've been playing cricket with him as a 16 year old he's always found a way and i think he'll do it this Ashes series and um i think for that whole team they really want to leave a legacy like they've got the mace they've won the mace yeah they've had a great 
last couple of years. Won four out of six series. Um, you know, they had a, a, a draw in Sri Lanka, beat Pakistan at home. So in the subcontinent, they're starting to get it right. They went down 2-1 against India, but we saw the likes of Murphy, you know, re-emerge. Um, as I said, we won the Mason. Then, but beating England at home, we haven't done for 20 years, 20-plus yeah. years. So this is... This for the for a few of these guys is going to be career defining, yep. um, because Usman, Warner, potentially Smith, potentially Lyon, potentially Hazelwood may not be going back to England to play another Ashes series. So mm. um, there's a lot at stake. There's some really cool storylines I think that's going on with cricket. You know, with the Ashes and um, what what's about to unfold. Of course, we've got. Um, tell me when to take a breath here as well. But we've got uh, <laughs> you know we've got baseball coming up. Um, you know, against sort of Australia's bowling basics, you know. So the, yeah, but that that's clash. interesting, isn't it? Because the baseball is new. You know, it's this new like yeah. sexy version of approach to Test cricket. Yeah. But then we're a bit more of the like tried and tested. Yeah, line exactly. They're going to come in and just bowl the shit out of you. Well, it's it's what I what, what's happened up until McCullum's come on board. I think England had only won two out of ten Tests, and then since McCullum and Stokes have taken over. Joe Root's gone from averaging sort of mid-40s to averaging 60-plus. Wow. They've won 10 out of 13 games. Um, the one they lost against New Zealand, they didn't enforce the follow-on. Sorry, they did enforce the follow-on, which which teams generally don't do since Australia stuffed up in 2001 against mm. India and VVS Lux. It was, a bold, it was a bold follow-on from them, wasn't it? It was yeah. almost a baseball follow-on, Well, wasn't it was it? because they, they could have just batted them out of the game. Yeah. Made 700 and a drawn would have been the best outcome for New Zealand. Instead, they put... You know, put it on the line, and and they lost by one run, but it was captivating cricket. And I think most people, young people now, this is what they want to see. Yeah. When they played against Ireland, it was a four day test match. Um, was it? Was that yeah, a four so day that test was, match? That's right. So yeah. And, oh and shit! I was kind of thinking, why the hell is Duckett going so hard? Because <laughs> his his stats are incredible as well. Here's another crap stat for you: is he's he's opened the batting, um, he's faced seven hundred and fourteen balls as an opening batter, and he's only left eight. Deliveries. He's left eight deliveries. <laughs> Just eight. Wow. Are you uh, serious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. my It's funny because basketball has been, has been happening, like, in my periphery where it's like we haven't been playing him, so I haven't been watching it really. Yeah. Like, I'll it, see doesn't happen, it hasn't happened to us. It doesn't. Well, but yeah. I haven't seen us going up against it. And I'll see some highlights. I saw that last day where New Zealand beat him. Who was bowling that? Was it Wagner? Or did, was it yeah, that Wagner. That last Wagner, ball right. or whatever, yeah, right? Got, like, got I, Anderson down the leg side. Yeah, just glove one, yeah, keeper yeah, yeah. diving. Mm. So, like, I've seen a bit, but I haven't really seen it to, to fully comprehend that like leaving eight balls out of how many was it yeah eight 700. out of 741 so mm. i mean some of the like i've, I've nerded out here because i come prepared yeah so I know well this, you're a professional. This, this, you're a professional well this is a serious this is a serious, a serious uh, show exactly so someone like ollie pope <laughs> who's been batting at three um as before baz ball let's call it baz ball areas had six innings averaged 11 he averages 49 now at a strike rate of 78 um, he's a guy who we had his number in Australia mm. pretty comfortably. They brought Moeen Ali back from retirement. So he they played, have brought him out. They have brought he, him out. He, of he is not. He retired from first class cricket. Hasn't played first class game for eighteen months. His last one was against Australia, where he took three for hundred and seventy. So he's back, but had a successful IPL campaign. Right. So his aggressive fits the mould of this sort of yeah. baseball. Jack Leach not up to it. Cricketer. Yeah. Well, well Leachy wasn't up to it. Well, well Leachy's. Um, you know, I've got a soft spot for Leachy in my heart because he's a. A left arm uh, finger spinner who actually turns the ball, so I, I admire him. But he's out with stress <laughs> fractures. How the hell do you get stress fractures? Well, that's Bowling that's spin. Like that's why I was going to try and respectfully <laughs> ask you, like when it just comes to like T Twenty, I'm like, why would you ever retire? Like it seems like you're bowling. Well, fuck well off. It, 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 it's so less stress on your body. The, the, in fact, he's got stresses. I'm like. Are you going in for scans for that? Anyway, I don't want to disrespect the bike. He's obviously got a serious Are you a spinner? Story. What are you doing yeah, here? Like, that, what is going on here? That, yeah, so yeah. anyway, he's out with stress, he's, which brings in Mo and Ali. Um, another guy whose who's game I think has gone to another level under Stokes is Joe Root. So he, when he was captain, you know, they, they had a pretty poor run of it and he was averaging sort of mid-40s. He's up averaging over 60 now under Stokes' leadership, mm. um, doing really well. Zach Crawley... Um, is he young, Zach Crawley? Was yeah, he like a 20, new kid on the 25, boat? and Harry Brook is the youngest member who's had a breakout season in 2022. That might be the one I'm thinking Yeah, of. he's the one who's like just never played international cricket and then the last 12 months absolutely drained it, hitting runnable hundreds against Pakistan. Just right. exciting. So these fearless cricketers are going to go up against this really hardened pace attack of Australia yeah. and it's like intriguing to see how you're going to have baseball versus Australia's basics sort of combined. How it comes together. Yeah, and like... You know what, what? What? What's going to win out at the end of the day, or what if they're going to stay true to their own word and 
try and flog everything that's you know. But that's the thing, right? Like, what do you? Well, I was going to say, what do you reckon? That is. What's McCullum instilling in these guys? Like, just because you start going after every ball, do you just get better overnight? Like, how does? Or is it more that you've got the skill set to go after balls? You just you play within yourself because that's the way Test cricket's played. Well, yeah. I mean, it, it's Test cricket. You've got five days to win a game, so you know there was Steve Waugh's idea of this mental disintegration. You know, you just bat for time and wear the opposition down to a point that you you know you're so far ahead that they are just defeated. Um, but Callum's trying to reinvigorate the game of like we're, we're just out to win and we're out to entertain. And Test cricket needs that shot in the arm. Yep. T20 cricket has is, is sort of progressed that, I think. And McCullum as a cricketer, um, I think he's the leading six hitter in Test cricket. So he's, he's hit the most sixes uh, of any Test batter. And it sort of p- plays homage to the way that he went about his cricket. And it's working for England and it's exciting to watch. When they played New Zealand, I normally wouldn't, like yourself, normally wouldn't engage in it. But they played a pink ball test and guys are running down the wicket in the first over, hitting the ball over the top mm. and you're like, whoa, this is this is not how the game's meant to I be played. I don't know how I'm meant to feel about this. I've yeah. got an awkward boner. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> over England. <laughs> that never happened. Yeah. <laughs> got one right now. Um, yeah, so, I mean, it's... it's, it's uh, like, I'm, I'm pretty, you know amped up for it I, yeah. I mean australia also has their own um way of going about cricket you saw sort of steve smith hit 100 off 250 balls versus trav heads 150 of 150 so, so it's not like right australia now. can't match it with them yes well that was well that will, will kind of be interesting though right about mm. whether we are able to do what we plan to do it's like stay calm like if they're baz on the fuck out of us mm. like do we have to like go with them or is it about just trying to like hey, do what we are here to do and not try and emulate them it's a good question because it's like you know i, I yeah do you I, I think our batters will go in with their own plans because you'll always have that time as a batting group i think that the challenge will be the bowling group like this is where like the basics of hitting the top of off stump and hitting a knee roll on a good length on wickets that are seeming and doing enough is generally enough because you're going to ask the batter enough questions um, but if you've got someone like Duckett who plays at everything, do you do you bowl a foot wider of off and sort of challenge him because you know he's going to throw his hand at it? Do the fields you set look a little bit different? Usually we see sort of three slips, gully, mid on, mid off, everyone up. Do you start the game with sweepers out because you know these guys are going to try and take, you know, take risks yep. and they're, they're sort of attacking positions to have deep defensive fielders. So I, I'm more intrigued with how the bowlers – adapt to the way they bat. I think our batting group will be fine. They, they, they can go through the gears, you know. Steve mm, Smith yeah. was super for the sixes. He back-to-back hundreds. Yep. Um, Sorry, it's a bar flies in here. Yes. It's all right. It's, yeah, that's all right. You cut that out edit, edit in the wow. editing room. Yeah. Every single interview, there are bar flies <laughs> flying around. People are like, oh, yeah. sorry. It's the VB. <laughs> um, yeah, so, I mean, I think the batting group will be fine. You've got Travis Head and then, you know, you've got Cameron Green, obviously. Uh, Davey Warner at the top, who we know can – you know, speed the game up, and yeah. that's what you need to do to win. But I think the most exciting thing will be if the weather's fine, you're going to see result games. There's going to be no draws. And for 20 years, as I said earlier, this team hasn't won in England on England soil. Last time we retained the Ashes because we won at home. Mm. Right. Um, and all we have to do to retain the Ashes is draw the series. But I, don't, I get a feeling that Pat Cummins doesn't want to have a legacy where he's retain the ashes. Yeah, he, definitely. He there's wants, a couple of ro- there's a couple of wrongs that need to be righted. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, like, to, be, to hold the Mace as world champions, right? We beat India. But the fact of the matter is India's beaten us twice at home and we're yet to beat them at home and we've played them twice as well. Yeah. But they we beat them in the World Test Championship, so we, you know, we win the Mace. Um, England is sort of the, in the same breath, you know, like if we draw the series we will retain the ashes, which is great. But it's like, uh, have we beaten them at home, you know? And that's kind of like what you what you actually want. It was to all. I mean, it pains me to say it. Mm. It's yeah. really annoying. We did technically win. We're out of reviews. Mm. Tim Payne, thanks yeah. for that. <laughs> yeah. but, we, we, we've forgotten. We've moved on. But uh, the, history, yeah. the history books show to all. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? And that's also, what they show. like, one of the great innings of, or like, you know, that innings that's from Stokes. Stokes. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And I, I was reflect, reflecting on, like, what – my favourite Ashes moments were. And unfortunately, a lot of them are, you know, like the 2005 series, you know, Michael Kasperwitz caught down the leg side yeah. of his glove. Um, you know, uh, Ben Stokes innings. I'm like, God, you know, I think sport still needs its heroes and villains. And Stuart Broad coming out with the fighting words I love and then Starkey <laughs> fighting back with, you know, saying, oh, well, you had better conditions than what we had, you know, yada, yada, yada. So I, 
I like that clash of heroes and villains. I think mm. it only adds spice to the game. And and we've always cricket's always been this gentlemanly sport. And so you know, healthy respect for the opposition. There's and, a you know, veneer of it anyway. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but I like the undertone because when they get yeah. out there, they get into it. I'm like, well, just grab a bit of that and take it off the field, and let's you know bring it to the yeah, public as well a bit. Let's let's not say it's you know boxing style, but you know I don't mind a, a bit few more shots yeah. fired across the. Bow. I yeah. enjoy shots fired. It gets me going. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Well, it's just more to work with. It's the same with like with State of Origin. It gets a bit mundane just in to take a turn to rugby league town. But it's like <laughs> it used to be New South Wales fucking eight Queensland. Now they're all teammates and shit. They just no one like no one feels like there's way less of that sort of rhetoric. So it's always a bit less intense. Yeah, I agree. Do you think that removing you know everyone's disdain for England in this room, except for probably Dave, who just He's not English, but I wouldn't show Well, he's got turncoat. He's, <laughs> he's not on Dave's just sitting over no, there. No, no, no. Dave's there. in well, New South Wales. Well, he goes South to Queensland. He's, Queensland. he's never been there. He's so. a Sydney oh, guy. He goes okay. for the storm. Would it shock? Goes to the storm. Yeah. Okay, all right. He's a turncoat. Yeah. So it just wouldn't yeah. shock me if he went for England. <laughs> but is there a part of it where, like, given the Baz Balls, potentially, like, this more interesting version of Test Cricket that, like, it's almost it's almost better for Test Cricket if they come out and Baz Ball us into the ground? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, in short answer, yes. I think if they have success with it, which they've already shown – you know, 10 wins out of 13 tests and the way they've demolished Ireland, if they come out and do that again, I think that, like, it will re- it will reinvigorate the sport. It may lend itself now to more four-day test matches because I think looking at test cricket, barring three, four nations, Australia, India, England, maybe throw in, you know, South Africa, a top bunch, New Zealand, it, it's sort of waning, you know. Mm. There's a lot of series without context. Yep. I mean, I'll tell you, next year we've got Pakistan and the West Indies coming out to Australia. Can't wait. And it's like, you're like... Can't wait. Thrilling. Yeah, that's right. Well, I've always... As a kid, I always grew up going, I want Windies back-to-back. Yeah, that's right. I want Windies into Windies. Yeah, you want want Garner holding and all these guys, Kirtley Ambrose, Courtney Walsh coming in and just bowling... One the heavy ball and like you know challenging around the you know around here and getting us jumping around in a proper it's contest. Whereas now T like Twenty cricket has sort of stolen, I guess in a sense some some of the players before their time because they want to go and chase the lucrative dollars, which mm-hmm. they're well entitled to do. So I think in in you know the way that England's doing is that they are going right. We are not just about winning games for England. We're happy. We're prepared to lose games to win them, but we're also we're going to make this sport entertaining again. We're going to make it fun to watch. Like, you know, we're going to yeah. make it what Ben Duckett does. Mm. He's not going to let – he's left eight balls in 740. He's, he's going to be playing shots. So when you turn on watch Test Cricket, mm. you know that, like, shit, this is going to be a real contest. Quick little shout-out to our friends at Ned Zeddy, proud sponsors of the show for another week. Uh, couldn't do it without them. No, we couldn't do it Number without. one putting, pl- putting platform – not putting platform – no, you can't go there to putt. No, but you as can't. in like roll putts, lag yeah. putts, which is a term I learned about today. Lagging putts. It's not about that. No, it's about punting. Yes, it's about true. It's about good, honest Australian punting. That's exactly Tom. what it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's exactly what it is. We've also got our group on the Ned's app, our private group, the About Even group, the secret passcode is Dribbler. Um, I will say this: Carl Felt's a legend. Kyle Felt, not a legend to King me. Kyle. King Kyle. Um, King Kyle. Shout out to King Kyle. They, you know what? They're really good at picking their lines at Ned's. They had their li- like they they are very good at what they do, and I am not good at what I do. I do it responsibly, but I'm not good at it. No, you don't do it very well at no. all. Um, you are responsible. I'm good at being responsible. I'm not good at punting. That's right. Unlike me, who goes, you know what? King Kyle, he's my man. And if he can't do it, can I? No can, one can. Uh, double dummy. Yes, I can. Um, that's the Ned's way. Yeah, that's double dummy. Ned. That's the Ned's way. <laughs> that's the Ned's way. Um, shout, shout out, out Ned's. to Ned's. What are you really gambling with? For free and confidential support, call the number on screen or visit the website. What will this do for McCullum's legacy? Is like just in cricket generally, if he has like helmed this complete change in approach, like it's kind of with cricket being as like as old as it is, and you know, there's so many um, like uh, historical figures in the sport, like. Feel like he's the. Is this would this be the most major change to approach in Test cricket? Since body line, since body, yeah, since Douglas Jardine, <laughs> and they being able to sit beers in the tea and, and lunch break, and yeah. brave yeah. from Jardine to come and live here after that. <laughs> yeah. He, he, is that he right? moved did to he? Australia. Yeah, did he? Yeah, he did. You Very must, brave. Did, yeah, did he have the? You must have had the fake glasses. And that <laughs> yeah, and the stars and hated yeah. men <laughs> going round. Um, Look, yeah, I, I think it is particularly England redefining the way that they go about um, test cricket. 
I mean, if they continue this on and the way they go about it, then, yeah, like I think what you'll see is young kids now going, you know what, I want to play test cricket because the real challenge now is to the next generation of cricketers who are sort of 10 to 20 and they're coming up through the ranks, they just want to, all they want to do is sort of hit boundaries and play exciting things. You know, this yeah. idea of, of slugging it out to earn your baggy blue, you know, is, is less appealing if I can go and play T20s all around the world. And yeah. I envisage when a bit like golf, Liv has shaken up golf, I think cricket in five years, if we don't catch on and, and really protect um, test cricket, you know, I envisage players like a Cameron Green saying the Mumbai Indians saying, all right, we own you, we're going to pay you $15 million and we want you just to play in our tournaments all around the world mm -hmm. and you'll have to ask, a bit like the EPL, if we can have him to play for Australia, you have to ask the club mm -hmm. to release him to play for his country. Almost like international weekends, you know, that's what they do in yeah. football anyway. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, where you might be able to let, release them for a time rather than be centrally contracted and being told you can play IPL exactly. or the other way around. I'm playing Could a bit of FIFA manager. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know you, what you're talking about. Do you think good on you, mate? Do you think that? Do you think four-day tests are the way to go in that sense? Because clearly the objective then would be to speed up yeah. the scoring, right? I think there's place for it. I really like the pink ball tests. I like the format of the four-day game. I mean, shield cricket's played like it, and um, you know you could maybe whack on the fifth day if there is rain involved. Uh, I don't think you're going to take spinners out of the game because. What happens is, you know, you're going to get more aggressive play from your lower order batters. So I think there really is space for four-day test cricket. Um, yeah. And, you know, I think it will probably be looked at. Um, it's funny. I remember when four-day was first thrown up, I was like, what the fuck are we talking about? But as the, like, the, the franchise cricket's got more and more, like, I guess invasive or, like, just, you know, everywhere, you're a bit like, oh, fuck, like, whatever yeah. we need to do just yeah, to not speed, lose it. Well, that's it. you just got to speed it up. You know, T20 was a shot in the arm that cricket needed many years ago, um, you know, because it brought a new demographic, brought more younger families and kids. Generally, it was, you know, the old pale male stale type that turned up to watch the cricket, mm. you know, and mm. sit there all day and, you know, pale star pods, pale star Pale star Do we get that? Do we get that? Yeah, that's, that's, that's right. us. That's us. Yeah. That's us. Get piss as a fart. Yeah, yeah that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Criticise, you know, because he, he yeah. wafted at one on his 74th <laughs> delivery and like, oh, pale yeah, he's got the concentration, male. you know. Um, you know, uncovered tests, you know, uncovered wickets and, and unlimited, you know, test cricket was unlimited days there for a period on mm. uncovered wickets. The timeless test. Yeah, yeah that's it. No, they wear chicken skin for gloves and hollowed out uh, loaves of bread as thigh guards. And, you know, you watch some of the footage of it's some ridiculous. of the other cricketers and you, you you think the game has gone a, uh, you know, it's come a long way since. So I think the game's evolving. Four-day cricket is, is something that I think they could play around with, maybe even if they did the pink ball test as a four-day exhibition. Because uh, I know in Adelaide, um, you know, that's, that's, that's huge. You know, mm. it, it just goes into the night, there's marquee set up. So it's a bit like a race day as opposed to a cricket day. Cricket sort of on in the background and you get the marquees yeah. and, and tip a few in. So, yeah, I, I think they need to be continually trying to challenge the norm um, because right now in two weeks' time, there's there's a tournament starting in the new, in the US, which is mm. the first time they're going to have a, a sort of a T20 league that's um, being ICC approved. Zampa, Stoinis, Mitch Marsh, a lot of these guys are going to go over and play and now these guys might be at the back end and may not play test cricket, but the danger is the, those younger guys who still may have the potential to play test cricket go, you know what, I don't – I'm going to go and earn 300 grand and play for two weeks. Yeah. I don't want to sit out in the field. Or and, in the first – Fake myself under the sun, like not – you know, I get a first baller and then yeah. I'm going to uh, bat again for three days. Or the first sign of like even like career hardship where it's like, you know, maybe where back in the day it was like the grind was kind of what made you a better test player. It's like I'll just – the first bit of grind, it's like I'm fucking off to the US. Well, well yeah, I mean, and I, I don't know, like money talks and – you know, if you're a young cricketer coming through the ranks, like Tim David, for instance, hasn't played first-class cricket as far as I know. But I didn't know who he was. Yeah. I was like, who is this guy? So he started out in Singapore and now he's like one of the most wanted franchise T20 batters yeah. around the world, earning millions of dollars. And, you know, you ask him and he's just like, I've got the best job in the world. I literally turn up and try and hit every ball for six <laughs> all around the world and yeah. you have to travel and get paid a shit ton. You're like... Well, it's, it's funny because Chris Gadd used to brother, that. Rock on, you know. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm there going, ah. Anyway, if I bowl that ball 63 times or 64 times, you might just miss it. Yeah. You know? well, <laughs> well, Chris Gale used to do that and everyone's like, oh, he's just a gun for high. He doesn't care about the longer format. Like almost 
Almost giving him shit for almost, it. Almost, yeah, almost thought that he was beneath yeah. everyone else. But now it seems increasingly that that's what people want to do. Yeah. And like you said earlier, if, if these giant IPL franchises start buying other leagues and other yep. teams yep. and mandating that you run around the world yeah. hitting... Well, you make the decision and then, you yeah, if you signed up. I mean, like, imagine if Liv came in and say so, so someone with big money and just said, right, you know, $50 million for Virat Kohli, you know, not to play international cricket. You can't say no. Well, no, you can't say not. no to that. Well, he's probably already on 50, so maybe 150 or 200 yeah. or whatever it is, whatever they want to offer. Yep. Say so you're ours, you're ours, you're ours, you're ours. You're not playing test cricket, you're playing our tournaments. That we're going to do it, mm. um, you know that 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 sort of that challenge is real. I know. know it's it's just, and I get it. I think the thing that's like sad if it does go that way is that they're too again a complete fucking idiot like myself. But like T <laughs> twenty, like there's just you lose the 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 real like cricket tactics and the contest yeah, yeah. in like the T twenty. Like the it's purity, just that's right, and the. The, con- the real purity, like the test cricket is still my favourite because it's a real challenge between bat and ball. It's yeah. played over five days. You get a couple of chances at it, but the longer the battle, you know, the harder it is because you, you expose yourself more. You know, you've got the chance to be the hero of your role or you get it exposed. And then if you play that team again and again, if you've got a weakness, it really, really shows. Mm. Whereas T20, you know, I liken it to sort of like if you had to play Rafa Nadal in a five-setter, you're going to lose... You gonna lose every time. Every time, right? Yeah. If he had played for one point, like, he can one say point, like one point out of hundred, and he has to serve, and he double like you're a chance winning. So the shorter yeah. you do it, the more likely you are to have a crash. Win into a contest, yeah. you know. That's why T20 cricket's so tight. Any team on their day, one guy has a day out, they win the game. Mm. But Test cricket over the course of five days, you really get to know a lot about the character, the team, how connected they are, and the proper contest because cricket's got made up a lot of variables: the wicket, the umpiring. You know, the moods of the 11 players, the staff off the field, the night before, you know, everything sort of comes into play. Mm. It's starting to sound like, you know, that any any given Sunday yeah, no, this is yeah, really The good. inches yeah. we need yeah. are everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> well, mate, it's, um, <laughs> it's inspirational. Uh, the yeah, we uh, make sure we put some music underneath that. <laughs> yeah, right. the, great, uh, the great cricketer boys are a little bit sort of um, doomsday prepping in, in the right. sense that test cricket's on the on the way out mm. from your perspective let's assume that that the indian billionaires have their way and it all gets franchised and everyone's like becomes a gun for hire in a t20 mm. world what do you think that'll do for the ashes which will obviously still be played if you're just getting players that uh, play 20 t20 50 50 out of the 52 weeks a year mm. or blokes that you know, no one really knows of because they're not in the T Twenty setup. Like, what do you think that'll do for the Ashes contest? Yeah, I mean, it's it's difficult to ask. And like, you look at say someone like Moen Ali, who's been brought back in after retiring from first class cricket, which is Red Bull cricket, and still being able to play. You know, maybe you might see that style of player still being able to play Test cricket. Maybe you might see just the only series being played, the ones with context, the Ashes. Um, India, India, and I don't know across Tasman, Australia, v New Zealand, like you yeah. know that maybe we might just keep it. I don't know, but I think you know that World the, Test Championship won't be but men. Well, shit. I think it, like, it, it that is the ICC's way. Some people said that's lip service to Test cricket, but I think it's it's relevant and needs a place, and I, and Test cricket sort of needs a final to give it context. And I think that's what they were thinking along the yeah. way why they chose to do it. Now, India came into that and it was four days after the IPL. So it's, they've got basically zero preparation coming into that game. They weren't happy about that. And as I said, they? if you look back literally at the results of India against Australia, you know, in the long testing formats, they'd beaten us twice on our own turf and twice away. <laughs> we beat them in, in England on a neutral territory. And mm. like, hey, we're, yeah. we're, we're, one, we're one for the greatest. six games. We're, we're the best. We're, yeah, we won the Woo! one point against the Dale. Don't worry about the yeah. five-setter. <laughs> um, so, win's a win. Yeah, win's a win. And it is, and it's great. And Paddy Cummins come out and said it. He goes, you know what? It's one game. We were up for it, and we, we won it on the day. And they, they're deserving champions and champion team. Um, you know, that now can go around and officially say they're world number ones. Yeah. But, but it was four days after the IPL. Yeah, that's right. So there is, the, I think there is a way that they can try and manage that, whether they decide to play a longer series that Rohit Sharma was talking about yeah. or they uh, reschedule it for a different time. I mean, I don't know. Um, is there also probably in the in the increasing franchise cricket world where it becomes like the, best, the players that can adapt from one format to another the quickest, mm. like... 
again, having not played cricket professionally, which may shock everyone, like, <laughs> you know, being able to go like, all right, I'm playing T20 here, which is me just trying to smack the fuck out of the ball. Yeah. Now I need to put your red, ha- red put ball my red hat, ball on, hat on. Yeah. Yeah. Put and it on. like, how difficult do you think that actually is? That transition from one to one is it significantly difficult? Is it a mindset shift that needs to happen? What yeah. is it? Yeah, it's, I think it's I think it's everything that you said. It's mindset. It's technical. I mean, when you've someone like say Cameron Green has just come off and played the IPL, yeah, you, your length balls that you're usually defending in Test cricket, you're trying to score off, you're chasing wide ones, and you and you're building up this memory bank of like cricket. You get like what point six of a second to make a decision. So it's reflex action and like to train yourself to go from like I should be hitting that for four or six over cover or ramp or scoop. Um, you know, you're going, oh, I've just got a forward defend, you know, yeah. get out, big step stride, let a ball go, let 60 balls go, bat for 120 balls for 30 runs. Whereas T20 cricket, you know, you'd want to be, you know, if you face more than 30 or 40 balls, you want to be on 100 like yeah. um, Cameron Green did. So, yeah, there's huge adjustments for these players going from uh, different formats, different formats, but... I think as the game goes on, these guys are getting better and better prepared in the shorter turnaround and windows to adapt. Um, but it is a significant challenge, and players who can do it the best, obviously, are the ones that they will they'll pick. That's why I think Australia probably um, had it, obviously had a bit more of an edge in that game against India. They were a bit more well prepared. Marnus and Steve have been playing some county cricket. Mm. Um, the other guys had been. Uh, had a bit of a practice camp in Liverpool where they're playing a bit of golf and sort of getting used to red ball cricket again. So, um, but adapt, you're right, adaptability is key through skill set and mindset. Um, and it will be a forever changing landscape uh, for that to, you know, I guess progress for who we choose in our teams. Um, with the, so obviously there's the, the US T20 comp that's starting mm. when is that starting you say uh, i start oh, i don't know i didn't get picked up in it which is really yeah, fuck. did you have a would you would you put your hand up oh uh, like smudge was telling steve smith so just dropping names now famous people that no no are, we know smudge yeah yeah well, smudge, yeah. well, well I've, seen yeah. Him. I've seen him yeah, yeah. we've interviewed him we've interviewed through a camera yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> over zoom as close as i've got to him the last 12 months <laughs> how is he <laughs> yeah well, uh, this was about two years ago so <laughs> actually you probably spoke to him more recently um he was like because he loves new york he's 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 got a place over there and playing he said mate you've got to get involved in these u.s leagues um and the problem is you know that left arm non-spinning finger spinners aren't the most desirable players in world t20 tournaments there's probably which is you know exclusionary <laughs> yeah, that's it's right. bullshit yeah. it's what i'm really good at yeah. doing uh, <laughs> so it's such a shame um so yeah i think that moses is going over zampa and these and i think greg shippard's coaching a team um Stoinis, max as i said those guys are going to go over and play and give this tournament some profile I think the cap's 1.5 million. They play only for two weeks, so it's good money again. Two yeah. weeks? Yeah, like I think it's five games in 17 days or something. Good like, lord! I know. Nice. That's it's I mean, just this is like, and this is in a this is in America. Yeah, we're not going to give a cricket fuck. Fields. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't know they got cricket fields in America. Or where are they going to play? I know. Yeah, like, there's going to be some round third stoyness. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's going to be this bizarre. Um, you know, think, but this is the way that the the game's going. It's just a new market they can crack into, and then of course you've got the the T ten tournaments, which some people are saying are going to take over the T twenty. So it's like, surely not. Is yeah, it? I, no, like, it's like it'll, it'll soon we'll just be having. Well, I used to play. I played in the days when they had the Hong Kong sixes, and you'd bowl six overs in in Hong Kong, and would go over as these junior cricketers. I remember going over with Davy Warner and the, the Australian side, which was not Australian cricket. It was Bunch of guys that weren't playing first class cricket, the, the rookies from each state would go mm. over. Hong Kong Sixers. And you'd play in Kowloon, which is this really small, tiny ground. And like, there's some places in Hong Kong, and you just like, all you did was just get super fizzed, you know, because <laughs> you're there for three days. <laughs> and then you'd go the next day and be like, oh. And you, I remember bowling to Demi Mascarenas, and because the grounds are so small, you'd bowl the ball and hit every ball for six, and it'd go out of the ground. So the umpire just have to give you a new. Like new, new cherry, so you you go <laughs> just boom, new cherry, boom. So you, I think I got to bowl eight uh, eight balls or something, and you hit all eight out of the yeah. ground. So I had to change the ball eight times, um, and you had to retire on thirty. But yeah, we needed. Uh, I think it was two off the last ball, and I came out the bat against England, and they actually had a decent side. And 
you know, I was the only bike to not hit a boundary. I hit one straight to Long On, which is 30 metres away. And as I was running back for two, I tripped over. Oh. <laughs> so I had, to go, I had to go upstairs. <laughs> and the, like the replay is me just like stumbling over, bat falling out of my oh. hand, them just ripping the bales off, <laughs> me face down in the middle of the wicket, <laughs> just losing the final. Oh. And Davey Warner, I swear to God, didn't speak to me for two years because the winners <laughs> made 20 grand. And, oh. um, and he was like, mate, you've you're like, he, he would hit 30 off his eight balls and retire every game. And then he still blamed me for not being able to bring it home for the but hong kong sixes. for the hong yeah in the hong kong sixes tournament so i mean the Jeez, game that was ahead of its time yeah well australia when australia actually when it first started sent out a proper team with like steve war and um steve war talks about it in his book as a bit of a turning point he got out slog sweeping against malaysia and he said at that point there i was like right i'm going to take every game that i play now seriously as in you know no more messing about or yeah. just taking things frivolously so the idea of shortened cricket games has been around for a while. The Poms started T20 cricket. Did they? They started it. Uh, and, well, they're world champs now, so they beat Australia. They won the last world T20 mm. champs. Um, but, you know, the, that one didn't count. You yeah, want to talk about something that didn't count? Yeah, that one. Null and void. Yeah. No, that one didn't count. Yeah, screw that one off. Um, but, you know, coached by Matthew Mott. Um, again, he's got something to do with this idea of baseball, as in England have got some coaches now. They've got overseas Brendan McCullum, and they've got Matthew Mott as their white ball coach. He was really successful with the... Women's Australian team, you know, his first tournament as a coach, he's won. Would you um, coach? Nah, like, is it in any way to, like, I, stay in the game and around I, it and, like... I love helping guys out in the specific role of spinning, which, um, you know, or, or, or the game, but, no, I just don't have the... I'm not a, the mentor the kids should be looking up to. <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Don't trust me with your kids. How much? And I have a teaching degree, so well, there you you know, go. yeah. What sort of tactics? <laughs> that's, that's concerning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I haven't registered. I haven't registered. Been deregistered for a while. <laughs> how much tactics go into T Twenty then? Like, and how how much do co does the coaching have an impact it's, or an input? You know what? For a four day game, you talk bugger all about the game. You you just sort of it's really basic because it's a long. Foot, you know, you just worry about the conditions and you're just trying to top of off with a good bumper. T20, you have meetings for hours on batters, like when they're in, their first six balls, when they start going, where to put your defensive fields. They go on for hours and hours. Right. And Shippy's really good with us at the sixes. He just leaves it up to me to look after our spinning group. There's only usually three or four of us. And I just identify um, small pockets in the field, what I think the wicket will do, and then just sort of basically tell the players to trust their skill set, mm. you know. Because there's two things. You've got – you make a choice and then you've got execution. And, you know, if you get both of them right, you know, generally you're going to have success. You get dot ball or get a wicket. But sometimes you can make a choice, which is a Yorker, you know, execute it, but the guy ramps you for four. So you go, you know what, the choice is wrong, but I executed it right. So – and you can do that for 24 balls. You can go back with any bowler and ask him at the top of the mark, what were you trying to bowl? So Yorker. You know, and sometimes you can bowl it halfway down the wicket, they pull it, it goes straight to square leg, and they get a wicket, but mm. they've missed what they wanted to bowl by three metres. Mm. So it's right, can be, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, can, yeah, so yeah. like the game, you can really break it down into 24 individual contests. So coaching at that level is increased and the tactics are... Interesting. The number of bullshit, the, the pay that you get things like this thick, but really? I, I prefer to just not, not read it. I read You're it once in a Ben Cousins book. He said he didn't study the opposition. He didn't care. He just knew he trained harder. So I just took that philosophy. Mm, yeah. None, none of the other philosophies no, that no, he might no. have had, but just that the, one uh, in particular. So you, you go a vibe, basically. Yeah, I go like I, I've played Old enough school. now. I go out there and like you feel feel the feel the turf underneath your feet. You get a sense in the batters what they're trying to do and trying to adapt on the spot. And I know what I can do and what I can't do. So experience never gets old. Experience never gets old and. I, you know, I always encourage kids. I said, don't go and watch yourself bowl bad stuff. If you want to prepare for a game, go and get a highlights reel of you taking wickets. Make yourself feel good because when you feel good, you're relaxed. And when you're relaxed, you can execute. Mm. Um, and, you know, if they're in the middle of the heat, you know, when the heat's on, um, I remember saying to Todd Murphy and he's, he's excelling. You know, I'm like, 10 years from now, mate, no one's going to give a shit about this game, how big that six was, whatever it is. So just relax, take a deep breath. And bowl what you think's the best ball, you know, and, and you know we'll be out of here an hour and a half. We'll bounce in the next game, and like who won last year? Perth. Okay, yeah, great. No one, no one really remembers, you know. So yeah. I sort of have that attitude going into to cricket. As long as the pay keeps going in on the fifteenth, I'll just <laughs> keep, I'll keep, I'll keep turning up. Do you think you? But you mentioned earlier that they're doing T10s. I remember we were talking to Chris Lynn. I think it was on 
um, a broadcast we did. An, an ill-fated live an stream. An ill-fated live stream. And I asked uh, Linny, I go, mate, like, do you ever, ever think you're playing a T1? You know, just sort of <laughs> yeah. taking the piss. Yeah. He didn't like that. No, he didn't. He, yeah, he, he called you an idiot. He called me an idiot. <laughs> but is well, – is, is that where we're headed? Gonna, Are we just going to get to? I, I think of the Peter Griffin. What was it like? He had the, the five second show. The Peter Griffin. Like everything's just getting so short now. It's just crammed <laughs> and condensed. Like, so, uh, uh, people Griffin, might look so back and go, "It's genius." So I don't know. Well, <laughs> genius. So, yeah, you're right. Uh, well, what happens when a game is tied in a T twenty? It goes down to a super over. So mm. in a sense, the game is there. Already is a. A, a T1, T1 in a yeah. sense that that's how a game is decided. Mm. The game goes back to one over from each team. So and those are actually thrilling. They sometimes. are. They're those amazing. Are, yeah, like really to see. Good. Yeah, I'm not necessarily paying for a ticket to a T1 though. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well, you, just, you just squeeze a heap into yeah, one night. Yeah. <laughs> you get a whole season done in a night. <laughs> like one dollar. Actually, oh, <laughs> you would. There's people trying to come out with like T5, so five players on each side, each player bowls one over from the five. Um, yeah, five, yeah, including the keeper. Yeah. I and mean, I've heard all of these ideas that are just running. I think the thing that's good about a T20, and like maybe a T10 can still do it. I like, I don't know how long a T10 would take, but like mm. T20 seems like in a shortened format, like an ideal time to make it a spectacle people go to. You can go there for the night. You can go see both teams. Like it's shorter than a one day, which is a bit fucking yeah. punchy these days. I like to go on. Yeah, it's, unless it has any. Again, unless it's the World Cup. You're like, yeah, uh, you know. Yeah. The only reason I think one day cricket still surviving is because India really loves it. But T Twenty cricket goes for three hours, so it's just at that right point where you're getting the attention span of kids who you know who are like. Watch the game and then anything. just go. You know what? I can't give me the you know the KFC hit bucket and I'm going to go headbutt another kid. Yeah, and, you know they still get to watch both teams in a contest. I think they've they've shortened it again this year. So this year instead of playing 14 games, it's 10, and they're going to do it all through the school holidays. So they, I think CA have got it right in that That's sense. Smart. Yeah, just do it like it was play game day hectic. one on the start of the school holidays and the last game at the end. Piss off the weird final series that they've had. Just have the top four teams go through. Keep it really simple so people at home can watch it. At one um, period there, the final series was like, you needed a degree to work out what the fuck was going on. Yeah, you had on. the Eliminator and the Accommodator and the <laughs> Research. And you're like, oh, what the... F-? Yeah, and like, the Heat finished fifth this year and made it all the way through to the final. And I'm like, not too many comps in the world, Rugby Union, I guess, do it, have five out of eight teams make the finals. I'm like, it doesn't do it justice no, after 14 no, games. No, no, And we'd finished second, so we had to go to Perth. We played Perth, we got flogged by them. As we always do, we came back and we got to play the Heat at home. But you know, we travelled and we just weren't switched on on the night. And the Heat went through and you know nearly snatched it from fifth. But you know, I think four teams is enough. Get it all done in the school holidays. Really short, sharp. I think you'll get the better crowds. I think the crowds, the attendances were great. The viewership at home was great. Um, you know, and it keeps the sport alive in a sense, which you know. Well, we I, have I'm the the test players back again this summer, or is that or are the tests being played in no, January? No, because so the fifty over. The tests have been moved back because the 50 over World Cup. Yeah, it's a big year. Which oh, sort of prevents God. it sort of prevents mm. the the boys. From and it's playing. huge, right? Because like when we played at Sydney at the SCG, we had Steve Smith feed D Warner. You mm. know, and back in the old days, it used to be the like Brad Hodge, Cameron White, Marlon Samuels fighting against Shane Warne, and you had like it was pretty big. They'd have 80, 90,000 pack out the MCG. Mm. It sort of lost that brave and boldness to. To, to, to adapt so we can get back to that level. And you're right, playing, getting the Australian guys involved is so key. Yeah. So we had Steve Smith, Dave Warner, 38,000. Dave was out in the middle and he was sort of practising. I remember I went up to him and said, thanks, mate. He's like, oh, what do you mean? I said, look, the only reason we've got nearly 40,000 here is because you've decided to come back and play. Yeah. So I'm like, pay him whatever, but keep him in our domestic product. It, it is. It makes it so much more oh, compelling to people, watch. People, you, no one's going to watch... With all due respect, unless our best Australian players aren't playing BBL, so mm. we need them there, and you know it doesn't matter what we, you know, pay them what we, you know, pay them what they deserve and what they, you know, what they would get because we don't want them going and leaving early and playing in Dubai leagues. No, we don't want Faf Duplessis coming for five games and then just leaving, mm. and then we're playing the finals and kids not being able to connect Fuck. with yeah. heroes. You yeah, know? what would you do about the schedule then? Particularly the test schedule, yeah, well which we like, you know, it's that's the bread and butter for most Australians. Are sitting mm. down at Christmas time, New Year's Eve, and mm. and putting the cricket on, or well, that time of year. 
but you do lose the test players because the big bash league's on then and yeah. it's a great time for it. Do you move that to later into January? Like, where do you... I think that... Have you I got think, any ideas? No, I, I, I mean, it's, I think that it's, it's a really hard one to juggle. I think your best way of trying to keep it alive is the players that aren't playing in the test squad trying to get them back into teams. But again, it's, it's just the windows are so hard because the IPL then has its own window, which is, which is perfect for them. But our best players will go there because that's where the, the money is. It's, it's, re- it's a really difficult balancing act of where you put it on. The, the WBBL has its own window. You know, it's all about trying to grab days of the year. AFL want to take up as much of the year. Cricket want to take up as much of the year. Yep. NRL want to take up as much of the year. So, you know, cricket are like, oh, we'll have a draft here. Well, basketball's playing on Christmas Day, you know. We'll yep. we'll play at midnight now then. You know, like literally we want to just <laughs> yeah, fill it yeah. with content. Whatever yeah, yeah, you do, yeah. we can do three yeah, times more. Three <laughs> so, yeah, you got Steve, Wall walking, uh, Steve Smith walking out to bat number three for Australia, nicking off and then putting the Sixers colour on and going <laughs> yeah, and yeah, playing yeah, a T20 that night. night going going across town to Marvel Stadium and just smack it a few out of the middle, <laughs> back on his moped, back yeah, out the middle, yeah. field at first slip, yeah. take a catch, and you know maybe that's the future of cricket. You're playing three different forms in one day. That would be really adapting. Yeah, that would. Stuff. Wouldn't <laughs> it? Yeah. <laughs> golden duck in Test cricket, golden duck in thingo. Oh, geez, yeah, that's a nice. what a day. great day. Smith would hate. He wouldn't handle that well. We sort of touched on it briefly. Poor old fifty over cricket. Yeah. The World Cup at the end of the year. Does anyone care anymore? Is it is it time to wrap it up? Like it's sort of a nice nostalgia sort of effect, at least on me. You know yeah. what I mean? It reminds well, me of growing up. Yeah, when we used to have the four channels, and you know, yeah. Channel Nine, you'd 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 hear Bill Laurie, Tony Gregg, Richie Benner, and you know they'd call it, and you have Australia v Australia A, you know, and that would pack out yeah. stadiums, and these series had big contact. Uh, you know, like you watch the Windies come out, you know, Viv Richards and. Clive Lloyd and, you know, and you're like, this is this is huge. Mm. Um, sort of our thing as well, you know, like Kerry gets it into the mainstream. And yeah, then it was. We, we sort of owned it a little bit, you know. Yeah. And well, we started it, you know. World yeah. Series Creek was huge and Ian Chappell was a part of that in the 70s, the breakout years when it first started. It really didn't have a big, you know, it, the first couple of games, people didn't want to watch it at all. And then now cricket played in coloured clothes with a white ball. It just captivated the hearts and minds of everyone because there's footage of back in the day when Bradman would play a shield game and they would fill out the SCG you know at a state level now you'd be lucky to get 30 people in a year watch a shield game you know turn up <laughs> during the, it's, you know, it's, it's generally you know, families friends or people who've gotten yeah. lost trying to go to Fox Studios to see a movie you know, oh, I'm at the cricket okay wrong, wrong spot sorry but I have my five bucks back thanks uh, so it's yeah I mean as I said, 80 cents in the dollar comes from India. So, and Indians wow. love cricket. So, so to fund a, a, a an MOU of cricket for Australia, you know, 80 cents in the dollar all comes from media rights from India, essentially. So, playing India in Australia, India have to buy the rights from playing in Australia, and mm. and we we that's worth a lot of money, particularly if we're world number one. That's what they want to watch. So, if India still want to play um, one day cricket, then it'll still be played, and the the challenge is trying to find again how you fit all this cricket in, and what is the first thing to go? Well, it might be less one day cricket, more T Twenty cricket, um, and and more less Test cricket, but Test cricket with like that has meaning, meaning and context for, and yeah. history. Less so, meaningless Test cricket. Yeah, I mean, I'd, it'd be fascinating to see in ten years' time sitting down with you guys again. If I'm still alive, um, <laughs> and if you, we're still being listened no, no, to, no, if you guys are even <laughs> still interested in talking to me, because you guys will be, yeah, <laughs> you're, you guys Wait, are on book the book him in, book him in for ten years' time, though. Just make a note of that. It's like going to the dentist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Same day, you free? Yeah. yeah, you free next year on fucking three o'clock. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> look it in. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know how the game's going to look in ten years. It might look. You know, I think it's going to look markedly different. I think it's speeding up at a form that, um, you know, the administrators really need to keep on it. Um, if they want these things to survive like one day cricket but the obvious solution is to bin that off and fit in more T20s um, uh, and allow countries to have their own leagues that players can sort of move around in that aren't jumping on each other's toes uh, it, you know as mm. I said it's really difficult privatisation was a big thing like okay let's let say um, the Sydney Sixers have a stake in an IPL team in a South African team in a uh, so then you're like you've got your players and you allow them to go for four games there but you want them home for these three yep. and you can sort of have it all gel um, when they when they start button heads 
like South African League is butting heads with the BBL and you start to dilute the talent, uh, you, you face challenges. But I think you can also make heroes of your local players. And Cooper Connolly did that for um, the Perth Scorchers this year by hitting the winning runs and he was a relatively unknown guy. But, you know, in Perth, you'd go over there, you'd play in front of 40, 50,000 every game. And he hit match-winning runs. He's a 19-year-old and now he's a household name. So the game has also got to understand that in Australia we have really good local domestic talented players yeah. as well as our superstars but we also need to make heroes of our local talented players because there's a lot of them i remember there was a player from um there's a player who go unnamed but was playing for south australia at the time and just couldn't lose the weight and that was doing all the extra sessions in your in fat farm and beminenti you know, <laughs> no, it's not, it's not ben Minetti, he's <laughs> one of my favorite, no, favorite, favorite cricketers we Is went that we went to origin with him a couple yeah. of weeks Did ago you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah oh yeah well i love Benny as well. We still stay in regular contact. He's one of those real grafting cricketers who's sort of had to earn it, you know, like mm. left Sydney, chased it, and knows how to win. Great competitor. Um, you know, natural skill-wise, you're like, oh, it's probably not there, but he just has this hunger to improve and do well. So I'm impressed. But this other guy was was just kept you know doing fat fun but not losing weight. So the, one of the coaches or players decided to follow him home. It was like after training, like straight through KFC. <laughs> <at the end. laughs> it's a yeah. Big bucket of chicken. Like, yeah. oh, well, the allure, the allure, the allure of the colonel. Is <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know it's a real, real it thing. It sucked dude. in many a good man. Well, yeah. all woman, all woman. Well, the, <laughs> well, the, well, footy, I get it, right? Because you need to stay fit and strong. But a cricket, I might do like. Do you need maybe the fast bowlers do, but yeah, how Jack do you need to be for cricket? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, well, you look at, fluctuated. You look at, yeah, that's it. And but Booney? can still get his job Booney? done. Booney was pretty big. Batters can still, you know, sometimes a bit of a bit of chunk behind your shots might actually help. Well, you. that's it. So I, I think there's a bit of a myth, and the game sort of come full circle in the sense that you know when we used to do training, you just get flogged for the sake of it in pre season because that's you sort of had the job justified while the S and C was there, so they'd flog you for. No apparent reason. Um, and now it's starting to get a little bit more specific. Um, you know, I think they, they had to do 2K time trials. Like, and every time I do it, I'd tear a calf. And I'm like, never in a game would I ever have to run 2K straight <laughs> yes. and yes. as fast as I could ever. A bench pull, a bench press. And I'm like, you know, the, this isn't going to help if I can't hold didn't the female captain of like a South Yeah, so Marazan Cap's girlfriend um, or wife. I, I, her name skips, but she's a, a, an outstanding cricketer. She played the Sixers, bold leggies, and because she missed a 2K time trial by a certain amount of time... Was it much, I don't think? She, yeah, it was like 30 yeah, seconds. She barely... She, she and she didn't get she to play. As well, or yeah, she like and it's like, it was like... It was actually a PB. So, you know, yeah, imagine... It was her best Yeah, so imagine the coach going, well, PB, you can see the improvement, but... You know, yeah, yeah good sorry. hustle. Yeah, good hustle. You're Get out. <laughs> yeah. Did you ever do any of those army camps? Never did um, an army camp, but I remember hearing stories about like uh, SCG McGill because we know, as I was saying earlier, we know how cricketers love to use. You, you're not just Steve O'Keefe; it's SNJ or it's SPD yes, Smith. Yes, your yes. middle name. The middle name. Yeah. And you, you know, you're it, not you not out. It. Yeah. You're, you're 36 not. Yeah. You know, it's not not out. Yeah, it's not. Or 36 red. So cricket has these little skull. Weird. I think skull loves the middle initial more than anyone I've ever heard. Yeah, in my life. I know. Followed by Howie probably. And he, he, he lo and 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 the skulls like throwing it a dartboard everywhere. Like he make 15 predictions. One will come off. Like oh, Boland's going to play the MCG test. But he's he's been he's been saying that they, these sorts of things for 20 years. I remember you saying <laughs> Michael Bright was going to have a flipper that was going to ruin uh, test players' careers, and he did have a great flipper. But it's like Michael Bright <laughs> played first grade, and that was it. Yeah, you know? never heard of him. Yeah, that's no, right. But, he, no, but his guy was always like, you know, he'd say he was always watching cricket. Um, but anyway, we did this boot camp, and it, um, Stu McGill was there, and it was a uh, it was you know paintball. Like you're mm -hmm. out of Campbelltown, you're like, it's just a waste of time going out to Campbelltown. Like, what's the point of playing paintball? Blah, blah, blah. So he get dressed up in the thing. I put the goggles on, got the gun. And right, Stuart McGill puts his hand up first. And he goes, right, how do you get out in this game? He goes, you, you get shot. So McGill goes, points the gun to his head. <laughs> Just gave himself a bullet to the back. Thanks. Well done, boys. <laughs> good oh, from McGill. Oh, That's McGill. good. So funny. So SCG Did McGill. Did the boys follow so uh, uh, I think the rest got involved. <laughs> <laughs> He's like right, running around on turf and the thing and fighting people. Like, getting stung with a gun, you yeah. know, in the ribs. Not knowing like. Stuart McGill at all, though, but that seems like, it seems kind of McGillish that he would do it. Like, you know, he yeah. doesn't seem like, he, he seems like he does what he wants. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think he was, um, 
you know, I know him. Re- I've got to know him really well over the last couple of years. He's had a, a horrendous, you know, time of things. Yes. Um, kidnapped in the back of a car right. and and Fucking beaten up. Will 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 do some uh, nasty things to people. Yes. However, he still yes. kept his sense of um, humour. Uh, throughout it all but yeah very very strong willed and I only caught him at the back end of his career while I was still playing and like had time for me as a junior cricketer playing up and I had a lot of respect for him but some of his uh, anecdotes are you know it's great he's actually he would be He'd he'd be great to get on the. I'd love to. Have would him love on. to have. Him. Would you? Yeah, 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 yeah put yeah, a good word in for us. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I catch up with him probably once every, um, or once a week. Oh really? Yeah, oh, because yeah, you do, do you're doing show, the show, but then we catch up and we'll have a beer as well. Um, and that, that shows with you, him, and the professor. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um, so as yeah, I think it's probably got about as many viewers as people sitting in this room. So. <laughs> 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 from humble beginnings, hey, from little mate, things, big things. We right. had yeah. 30 they listens don't. for four mate. years. Yeah, it's an expensive uh, hobby, I call it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Setting got, up lights and, you got and paying it. talent to come on. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to plug away, mate. Water yeah, seat. yeah. Well, what was it? The, the professor was saying that it was the the, the rugby guys uh, over in the UK. They had a... Um, their show took them six months and now they're, they're sort of raking in millions in thing. But for the first six to eight months, they were... Fuck, I would have yeah, killed for a six yeah, to eight yeah. month. We're, we're, talking, about, we're talking about four to five years. Yeah, when you came on, on the first time in 2019, you, we, we didn't tell you at the time, but mm. we know. weren't we weren't humongous. No. Mm. Yeah, but well, what what yeah. 100 listeners? Yeah, maybe, maybe. I yeah. can't. My we actually got the video up earlier, and we were in. Hysterics. I don't know if you remember it. Yeah, no, I do because I remember getting you brought us. At so the, after yeah. a great cricketer live you were the show. Great, you were the special guest for the great cricketer that's and we right. were in the green room. Yeah, because we opened for him. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, after that's the, right. After that's, the I show, we're having a beer. <laughs> I do and I tried to... We were all, sitting we're all just yarning, I think, after the show. <laughs> and I think, this is it. I'm going to strike while the iron's hot. Yeah. <laughs> He's seen us in, in action, <laughs> clearly impressed. Uh, I'm going to ask if he wants to come on the podcast and you just, without skipping a beat... <laughs> Just go, mate, nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> I'm out of laughs. I'm out of gags. I think, Couldn't possibly. In your defence, I, I don't think you entirely... I, I think the context ...understood was that, like, what we were. I th- well, I just... I think the point I was trying to make was I don't have any more stories than I'd given on that night. That's my best gear. And that, <laughs> yeah, that's it. In that's a, it. In a but shitty, it was, shortened career. I yeah. mean, what you saw... We saw that... Yeah. Again, we hadn't watched the video for fucking years, but yeah. we just went back and checked it out, and it was... It was just so funny because Eddie was the one that asked it. I didn't ask, so I just got to see Eddie like just get completely rejected. <laughs> Maybe great to have him in the podcast. Like, like, oh, yeah, right. nah, 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 nah. I was like, oh. <laughs> I actually got in strife uh, at the time, so I did the the podcast with you guys, and it was I don't think anything untoward, but there was a bit of swearing or whatever. And I was still in the states, God, um, and. One of the bosses came up to me at the end of it and he said, oh, yeah, he goes, mate, um, have a word to you. He goes, oh, you did a podcast, Hello Sport, guys. So you did have some listeners because oh, they were shit. listening and they had to listen through and he just said, it's, um, <laughs> oh, you're swearing and it's unacceptable and all this. And I'm like, look, cricket has a lot of different fans and, you know, you've got your thing. So I was explaining to him, like, oh, I'm trying to help sell the brand of cricket here yeah. by talking on a different level that – is not normally your cricket yeah. gentlemanly type. Exactly. Um, needless to say, I got sacked that year. <laughs> no! Oh, no! no! Do we so you got your sack. You sack. So that year I go in, we win the Shield. Oh, I go into a windowless room uh, with five of my bosses and they just hand it to me on a piece of A4 paper. Thank you for your service. Your time oh. is done. And then they went through a list of things that I'd done. I said, well, you, you guys are going to have to tell me what I've done wrong. And they I read off about a list of 15 things. And I'm like... Was, was one of them? <laughs> no, no, I think... <laughs> Please. I think there'd been, I, there'd been <laughs> some scar tissue build up over time. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you were the straw that broke the cat's no. back. Oh, that no. final left bomb that I left uh, with yeah, yeah, yeah. left. Well, um, look, we'll, we'll give you a hat to make up for it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Do you want uh, your test jersey back yeah, that you yeah. gave us? Do you want your test vest back that you gave us? <laughs> to send it to Mate, you. we've yeah. still got them. We went and had a couple of beers afterwards yeah. and you're on the phone to your mum. Yeah. And it just mom, reminded me every other... Meatloaf. It's like a scene out of... Get in the attic. <laughs> you get that up in the attic. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be up there somewhere. Have you still got it. You gotta yeah, get it out. Fuck yeah. 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 yeah, they'll have to come out during the the. Ashes. Mate, we we do. We get them out. They're no, we pro- wear them from time It'll be at the time. top of that fucking. <laughs> it'll be at the top of that box right there. Yeah, Mate, good. We we always get it. 
I've, yeah. Unfortunately, they're a reminder of the weight I've put on in, in the ensuing years. Because when I first oh, put it on, I'm like, yeah, this is oh, comfy, yeah, cozy. this is all right. Now I'm like, well, now it really I, itches. I, 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 I can't have eaten lunch before I wear this. Otherwise, I'm going to be very uncomfortable. <laughs> Which is probably why I'm not wearing well, it right now. Well, when you're now. doing, I mean, surely you can do a bit of late night calling of the cricket as well. You do the footy. Yeah, we're, we're going to do, do a live We're going to do, we're going to do a live stream. Do a, I was going to say you should join us, but you're, you've got plans, I got the hey? well, um, uh, talking about the low-hanging fruit and career, I'm, I'm doing the first um, first test with Channel 9, mm. who um, who pay for my time, which is great. You know, yep. you know you're not saying um, that you know, I'd enjoy being here with you guys for nothing. <laughs> no, but listen, we if have there's run- money on the table, I will <laughs> we, take it. Well, yeah. let me double down. There is a free hat. <laughs> <laughs> And a, and beer. a beer. <laughs> it's a real beer. Yeah. Um, yeah, Which so you're welcome to. Uh, another one if you want. That one you will have to pay for, but <laughs> yeah, they it. are there. It's out of the vending machine. Yeah. Out the front. Get um, the change bag, no? No, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I get to do, yeah, which has been great. I did the T20 World Cup with Brian, which is, I thought someone with maybe my checkered past may have found it hard to get anything of note, but. Um, mm. Not these days, mate. Turns out, uh, yeah. Um, Short generous memories. like me still somehow get to me. Uh, anyway, so, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, but looking so forward that work, to it. Though, so, like, so they're commentating. But they you're own saying the rights, you, yeah. Uh, you just have. Are you sitting up there? On camera the whole time, then as soon as the weekend comes, they'll cut back to you, or is it more just your voiceover? You guys will be. No, I think so. They'll have Tubby and uh, a few of the, prof- the the real cricketers, you know, <laughs> former Test captains, over calling the game. Oh, and okay. I think we'll do is like a pre-show, lunchtime, maybe wickets or or interval breaks. Right, right, right. Go back to studio, and it'll be three of Australia's greatest Test cricketers: myself, Aaron Finch, and Callum Ferguson, who between <laughs> us have played about, about fourteen Tests. <laughs> Commentating on yeah. tests, but as you Matty should Johnson, your baggy greens. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wear it. We'll put it in the dryer as well. I'm yeah, gonna yeah. cut it and have. We're a not giving you that Steve vest back Smith. now. I need you to wear that. That's yeah. ours now. That's a well, gift. Well, what's the Matty Johnson? You know, you don't need to be a a great baker, baker to know what bread, bread tastes, tastes like. like. But, um, it's a good one. It's a great. It, it, one. I, I will. I'll, I'll throw that out there if anyone doubts my uh, strong opinions of uh, cricket. Um, you got a bit yeah. of baker about you though. I, you've got you've you can got bake. The green. It's not like you've never baked bread. I, Look at that. Look I at that have life. been. I, yeah, that's it. And I and I'm a snuff. You know, I came prepared with with some stats on on the players. And and as I said, is this that on the back of an old contract? Yeah, this is this, 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 this is the ramblings of a madman. This is my release from uh, the Manly <laughs> Paddy Wales. Wagon uh, 2012 for uh, public nuisance. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, that is my watch, wallet, and phone. Signed by me. No, it's, uh, yeah. it's, it's not that. Okay. No, okay. <laughs> no that's, that's on the fridge. <laughs> yeah, it's framed. <laughs> Only special occasions that. Oh dear. Oh, shit. No, I've, uh, you- I've, well, a good segue. I've, I've, I've met a lovely woman in my life, Lexi Cartwright, whose dad is John Cartwright, who is the uh, assistant coach of the oh. uh, Broncos. Yep. Yeah, so Lexi's the, and the daughter. Is Jed, Jed is the brother who plays at the Bunnies. Yeah, so are you a Bunnies man? I'm a Bunnies man. So this is it, this, this is a nice. It's little, working out really well. Yeah, <laughs> um, horrible to watch footy with Lex because she's so invested in her brother and his health and you know him doing well and you know because he's one of those fringe players you know sort of rides every moment every mm. mistake and. Um, but he's like he's huge. He's six six, cut like a dot. He's like you know, he's, he's what you'd expect from a footballer that trains hard. Yeah, and he's 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 fit as buggery. But um, yeah, Bunny's fan. So, and then this is how convoluted it gets. Jed's best mates with Corey Waddell, who mm. plays for the yep. doggies. So they Four live together. Player. And Corey yes. Waddell's sister is Alex Waddell. And the Waddells and Cartwrights are great friends. So Alex Waddell is dating Jake Travojevic. Mm. And Lexi's oh. good friends with Alex. So we uh, all went out and had a feed um, in... With the turbo, with Jake. With Jake, yeah. So what we a went great out Jake. Jake He is. is... Mate, we went to the cricket and... Um, sorry, he came to the cricket because he loves the cricket and watched mm. one of the Sixers games. And he just got peppered the whole way, like, down into the ground and like I'm in my sixes kit and like no one's like no one's even known I'm like I'm, I'm the guy that's fucking playing did you start right? shadow batting like, and shit like, trying to like Jake, spin Jake, a Jake, saw this and I'm like go right here <laughs> so he, he gets he gets all the way up to the to the gate at the sixes game and in the members at the SCG as you know they're quite particular and mm. this guy's like oh Jake Troy was the security's like Mate, I'm a huge fan. I bloody love you. You're doing really well. He's, he's like, oh, thanks, mate. Thanks. You know, Jake's really nice and humble. He goes, but you can't come in. He's like, well, oh. I guess you've got, you got shorts on. 
And so, so this guy was like stuffed in my head. Sick great to be here. So Jake had to go all the way back to the Fox Studios car park, get a pair of jeans and come oh, back. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> the members, I'm like, this is, this guy's a god. <laughs> and the world's nicest bloke. So of yeah. course Jake was like, oh, yeah, my fault. Completely my fault. Oh, yeah, he's, yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. he's so sweet. You should have taken... Yeah, oh, I didn't know at the time that he, he couldn't get in because I, I, you know, I was preparing as cricketers do, yeah, warm up, you know. Oh, yeah, do, yeah, do, no, do we course. walk a lap and do a few yeah. legs things and we're ready to go? <laughs> you know, was, I was busy in my warm up focusing while <laughs> Jake was getting um, knocked back at the front gate. But it was, yeah, I went down in the members and I, I, they were sitting in there and then I just sort of came in, you know, cricketers usually st- you stay in the change room, you got someone guarding it, but like. I'm at that stage of who gives a shit. So I went down and like literally watched us bat because I batted 11 next to Jake. Oh, in really? The thingo. And he was just like, he was just laughing because of like the absurdity of it. Like I'm in the middle of a game in my sixes kit, just sitting next to him <laughs> in the members of like, watching the game. I'm like, yeah, go to the sixes. <laughs> Jake's just like, you're a moron. Oh, um, so yeah, so got to know him a little bit, you know, name dropping, but he is just a uh, like, you know, I think you know what you see is what you get with him. Mm. He's so passionate about it. He's got a big extended break now, and I think, um, I think, I think he's always a guy. You know, from the outside looking in, he's like engine. He's always ticking over at a million miles an hour, even when he's not playing. Yeah. So I think now that he's got the calf and he's out for expen- extended period of time, hopefully he's learning to switch off. He sounds bit. like he rides it so hard. Oh. I think we had him on. Was it maybe last year? They, so they gave us that. They him and Tommy came on oh, and they sweet. gave us the Tommy. Yeah. Singer. But he was like, I think when they came in, they'd, we'd started the season maybe last year with four games losing, like a four-game losing streak, maybe more. Yep. We, Must have been the we, season, was man, season before. Season before. Yep. yep. And he was like, mate, like, I almost felt like I was going to retire. Like, I just hated it so yeah. much. Like, he just yeah. took it so hard. He's so impact And he, and, and, the, and the all brother, like, they, they, they wear it together, I think, you know, just yeah. speaking and listening to him. Like, the, the tough time that Tommy was getting – when he's coming back from injury and finding his feet and all that, and he's like, you know, I just really want him to do well and just everyone to sort of pipe down. Mm. So, you know, we think of these athletes as, you know, just infallible and, you know, they just cut out the white noise. But, you know, I, these guys, from what I could gather anyway, you know, do take it quite personally. Yeah. And I guess it's a relief to see Tommy back doing so Even well. if you're not... Even if you're like shutting out the noise, like even if you're not reading the papers or on social media, you know what people are be saying, right? Yeah. Or like you know the It'd reactions. It would be impossible to miss. Yeah, really. You'd I mean, know. you'd have to be, you'd have to almost be bubble boy. Well, well, that's it's it's amazing. Like speaking to Steve Smith, and, and you hear about him with his cricket. Like he goes, he can't sleep at night because he's visualizing the game about how they're, you know, visualizes Stuart Broad running in and how he's just not going to get out. And Steve almost has said that on a few times when he's playing cricket that. Like I'd visualised the night that hard that I didn't sleep, but I just knew I wasn't getting out. There was no way they could get me out. So he'd turn up Shield games and we're playing Tasma- uh, Tasmania in Dremoyen and he said, uh, I'm not getting out today, boys. And he made 100 off 302 balls and he goes, I just want to knock all my bats in. So he had 15 bats lined up. Oh the my poor 12th God. man was just running bat after bat after bat out and he was just like... I'm not getting out different. today. Yeah, he goes, like, like there's just... It's just not happening, and yeah. he did, and he didn't. He batted all day, and Jesus. it's like when he's playing in Adelaide against the Poms as well. He goes off, you know. Smudger would say, "Oh, I found my hands," you know, in his weird thing. Oh, like, your that. hands are always there, but yeah. I found my hands. <laughs> and then I was like, you know, I just wanted to ring everyone and just say, like, you know, you know, we obviously can't bet on cricket, but I'm like, you bet on this guy. He's just going to have the best summer, and he did from then on. Because once he sort of just clicks and gets into this freak yeah. mode, like he did in the the test championship yeah when he wants to make a point or prove a point it's all, just, well it's like when he came back to the ashes last time after the band just goes out there and dominates yeah, you know? yeah. i saw a thing on uh a rival betting agency to the one that sponsors this great podcast uh but they put a post up i just want to try and find it, it was like his last his last few innings in england yeah uh unremarkable so he averages over 60 but it's like i mean back to back hundreds where is it here he's a uh, his last his last so 143, 144, 142, 92, 211, 82, 80, 23, and then 121. <laughs> Peace. How did you interpret Coley's? That's, in, that's insane. Like, like that's, that's just. That's Bradman light. Well, it's yeah. probably better. I think he averages, I think he does average more than. Well, than it, well it, it reeks of Bradman's, I think it was 1930 trip to the UK. Yeah. Where numbers were sort of. Reads like that. Yeah. 
But I wanted to say, so V. Wright Coley came out and said he was the best test cricketer of this generation. How did you interpret that? Smudge about smudge, not smudge. about smudge. Yeah, no, I think. Did you? I, I was think, that was that a nice thing to say? Was he basically like trying to lead us into? Like, was the test but cricket the, best. the caveat? Like, he's the greatest test cricketer of his generation. Uh, but I'm the best. Yeah. Well. Yeah, mate. I, I, yeah, I didn't. I didn't think of it like that. I thought of it as a. We're as a bit a nice more cynical. cynical. <laughs> I, I think. Well, well <laughs> Virat Kohli on the field is is one of those guys you'd love to play with because he he's like an Aussie. He competes hard and he's into you. But off the field, he's actually one, an absolute gentleman. Like, oh, we, okay. We looked after him when he first came out to Australia. I was playing at the academy, and he was a young under nineteens cricketer, and he came out and played. I think I probably said this in your last podcast, but he would come out and I'd have to pick him up at the airport. And he's he was an unknown. He's under 19 captain for India, but never really start. So we got along reasonably well while we're at the Cricket Academy. And I used mm. to drive him to ASICS to get half price shoes. So we had a deal as a, you know, Did he, as, he as loves to love it. Yeah. yeah. So he's like, I'd drive all the, the, the Indian cricketers. He'd come over and take them to the ASICS factory and they would get, you know, instead of paying 200, they'd have to pay 100. Anyway, fast forward 10 years, go over in 2017 and we're playing a test series against him and, you know, he's on this billboard for Puma and I read the paper and it's like, uh, Coley signs $20 million a year with shoe company Puma. <laughs> <laughs> so I was thinking and like, my chance of, uh, you know, a pair, pair of shoes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your back, you rub your back, you rub mine. And he didn't even say yes. He's like, I'll see what I can do. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, oh, yeah, 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 right on, mate. $20 million deal with Puma. <laughs> he didn't get anything? He didn't, no, he didn't flick me oh, the shoe. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he just Half price at least. <laughs> Not that nice a guy off the field, it would say. Well, where's the ASIC fact? You would have been yeah, out of the yeah, fucking... Yeah, yeah. Well, he, he could own one now. That's I mean, so it's just funny. phenomenal. Um, but yeah, lovely. I think he meant it with good intent. And I think okay. Steve Smith, is, he's got a method now and a hunger to score runs. It's just, if he's engaged and connected, like he just he just does so well. Mm. Like that 100 that he scored, you know, threw his wicket away in the second innings, chasing runs in the World Test Championship. But this series is about a lot of these guys leaving a legacy. Warner won't come back. Quaja won't come back. Lyon may not come back. Smiths may not come back. So these guys. Has he said to you what his plans are? No, no, I don't. I don't. When we chat, we very rare. Like, you know, it's. I just say well done, and it's sort of one line responses, or we'll catch up. You know, he's got a fascination for e-bikes, and we eat dinner together, and <laughs> you know, like it, it, yes, like he loves e-bikes and scooters and shit. What so do that's, you mean? That's well, what do you mean he likes okay, e-bikes? So, so the last time he was in Sydney, he got out to Bellevue Hill, and I live in Manly. He's like, you can get the ferry to. Watson's Bay or whatever, I'll pick you up. And I'm like, okay. Obviously thinking your car. He goes, have you got a helmet? And I'm like, what? <laughs> All right, goes, have you got a helmet? And I'm like, no. <laughs> he goes, because I'm picking you up on my e-bike. <laughs> So, turn up, so what, you got to wrap your arms so, around it. So, so, so he goes so, from so. Belby Hill all the way up to Watson's Bay. Oh, where, wherever what? the ferry was. Yeah, it was. So I get the ferry over and he's not there. And I'm trying to ring him and he's not picking his phone up. And I'm like, what? He's, has he stood me up after just like telling me to bring? So I'm, 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 I've got the ferry with a stack hat helmet. and, you know, <laughs> my bike shorts and linen and, you know, looking like I'm going to do the Tour de France. And he hasn't turned up anyway. I thought I'll just hang around for five minutes. Maybe he's late. Maybe he's hit a car. I don't know. Like, you know. But he turns up in his car. He's like, get in. I'm like, okay. He goes, hold this. So he gets his iPad out. So on his way down the e-bike, his iPhone had fallen out of his pocket and he'd lost his iPhone. Oh. So now, now we're on the hunt around eastern suburbs with Steve Smith in his car with his iPad trying to find, find, find my iPhone. And it's oh, like beeping shit. and moving. So we're like, is this the car? Someone's we're behind it. We're yelling out the window. And then we saw these bunch of kids and Smith says, hi guys, have you, you haven't seen a phone on the road? And these kids are like, are you Steve Smith? And like, like, he's like, yeah, can we get a photo? So now we're stopped in the middle of the road while kids are taking selfies. He's lost his phone. And I'm like, this is the weirdest thing of all time. I still got my helmet on my lap with an iPad and we're looking for his iPhone. Anyway, it stops beeping and it's in this house. So he's like, he's like, um, it's got to be in one of these houses. And I'm like, okay. Um, He's like, can you get out and knock on the doors? I'm like, me? I'm not fucking knocking on the doors. You do it. It's your phone. <laughs> well, just come over there so we can have lunch and hang out. Yeah. So, and, it's, and it's not going well. So, yeah, but he goes, yeah, but I can't do it. And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, I guess, I guess you know, you're Steve Smith <laughs> and I'm Steve O'Keefe, <laughs> the shitter of the two Steves. <laughs> so I'm like knocking on this door and this guy's like, no, mate, like, you know, get off my property sort of stuff. Uh, and then the next one. This guy had it and he found it and he was actually going to take it to the police station. He was getting into his car and we're like, you haven't picked up a phone, have you? 
and it was just smashed to bits. Oh. The screen had gone wild. Um, but yeah, it was a funny. That's so it was a, funny. <laughs> it was a funny That's story. so funny. So, did you go to lunch in the end? Yeah, we ended up. We ended up going. We had a, we had a feed. I said, and he didn't know much about his phone because he's you know he's. When you go away and you play so much cricket and you live a sheltered life, everything's done for you. So, yeah. you know, getting a – he thought, oh, I'd just have to buy a new phone. I said, mate, you can get a screen fixed in 20 minutes, you know. Mm. So he went and got it fixed down to the local thing and he had his phone back in <laughs> half an hour. That's but, such a good – So uh, – but I didn't get to go on the e-bike. The e-bike. That would have been great. That just <laughs> just dinky. You know Dude, I, mean? I would have loved to have pulled up to you guys at some traffic <laughs> lights and been like, <laughs> so? What yeah, the just, fuck's going on? Just with his <laughs> but was that the plan when I was for you two to, to share a seat? I, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, you know what I mean. I'd be like your own one. Hey, dude, just get a fucking car. I don't want to ride an e-bike from Watson's Bay back to Bronte or wherever you're living. Like, what is going on? He just, he just, he just loved the the idea of the e-bike and thought that you know me having a dinky bike was going to be exhilarating. I'm like, this wasn't fun when I was six. (laughs) Let alone when I'm. We know we know where he gets his thrill. (laughs) (laughs) We've all got our vices. Yeah, we're we're worth three and a half million. You got Steve Smith who owns half of Koala mattresses, and they're both obsessed with an iPad and an, an e-bike. e-bike. I mean, there's something really sincere and there are, um, you're nice absolutely about right. That, there is that, that uh, you know the, the simple things in life <laughs> I really enjoy. Yeah, yeah. Give me a Mercedes or a Ferrari. Yeah, I've got if I'm a as well. Fifteen million dollar Bellevue house. Yeah, yeah. E-bike. Whoa, <laughs> mind blown. <laughs> no, dude, check it out. Dude. It charges in twenty minutes. Yeah, look. All right, not, dude. I get not it. even pedaling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh got to love that oh, snatch. Right. But yeah, he's a, he, I mean, he's a guy I've stayed reasonably close with for a long time. And did I you mean, see his batting success being a thing when you when you knew it? Because like when he was on the scene, he was a, it was like Warnie's replay. He was a spinner, right? Yeah. Like, well, did you see that? He was a leggy. Yeah, I was on I was on that tour when him and Tim Payne both debuted. Um, I got picked. Um, to play against, there was two T20s against Pakistan, two tests against Pakistan in England because of um, uh, the things that were going on in Pakistan. They weren't allowed to play or travel there because it was unsafe. So they had the tour and I went over as a spare spinner because Nathan Horitz got injured. I played one T20 game, took three for 20 and two of those blokes ended up in prison for match fixing. No shit, someone but was my first weekend. <laughs> he just scooped one to 45. I'm like, still, I mean, no, 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 not that one. Not that one. Someone that was, was making money out of it. But anyway, <laughs> the figures still count. I, I still claim them. Yeah, um, but I went over there and he batted eight and he bowled leggies and he took three for 50, I think, at Lord's on debut. And then in the second test, made 80, batted eight and made 80. Um, and for a while, his batting wasn't really ta- – it was taken seriously. But one of the coaches, I remember on that tour, so he came to me and said, you need to tell Steve to bowl more because, like, he's in the team as a bowler. But he was just obsessed with batting. With right. batting. So he's like, in the nets just batting. He just wanted to be a batter. Like, yeah. he's, and this is how good – Could like, you tell, actually, though? Did you know, like, he was yeah. skilled enough to be a great batter? Yeah. I think I think he, he just had this to, – to think if – if, like, would he be the world's best and probably the best of our generation would have been a stretch at the time. Yep. But you knew that – there was something so unique about the way that he would play the game and the way that he was evolving and mm. developing. You knew that he was going to be – I thought he was going to be this unbelievable all-rounder that could get, could get picked as a leg spinner mm. and bat, but yeah. he just focused on his batting. I'm sure if he focused on his bowling, which a lot of people think he didn't, but when I lived with him, he used to – we'd go down to the nets and he'd bowl for hours really trying to work on his leggies. It was just really hard for him. Um as when he landed leggies. them, they were pretty good. Yeah. Well, remember in the last test series, he, he had to bowl – he bowled a couple of overs and knocked over Jack Leach at the SCG test when we won 4-0. Like, when he lands them, they're good. Mm. But it's just the consistency is not there because he just – I guess he just doesn't focus on it. But it wouldn't yeah. surprise me if he just went, right, I'm going to be a leg spinner. You know, he takes 700 test wickets. Like, it's just that sort of <laughs> – yeah. got that From sort of 34 to, uh, to 40. <laughs> yeah. 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 He just goes, I give up on batting. Imagine that's if he just leggy. goes, on a leggy Moon down the yeah. I'm a leggy. That's it. So yeah, he's, he's had a, I mean, a great career, and but I think players like him, I don't know when they're going to end up, but you know we're going to miss, you know, miss the quality of him. And like I said, I think this series he'll put his head down, and and I'm sure he's going to have a massive series. Whether they can win a series away from home, which we haven't done in 20 years, yeah, I mean that's going to be the big question. But I know that he'll be hungry to to do it because he, he just wants to win. Prediction so, for you? Yeah. Oh, I, it's so hard. I think Australia might have this their nose in This will come out after front. the first test. Yeah. Yeah, but you can still predict no, the No, no, I just wanted to yeah, give it that. I'd, yeah, I'd say it's going to be, there's going to be results. So I'm going to say, you know, 
I'll say three two Australia, and I'll you know I I just think England the way that they're playing, you know, if they have their day out, which they will and they have had consistently, we'll have our number. But I think overall, I think the basics of Australia will do well. And I think the players in the Australian team have got a, they really are committed to leaving a legacy behind of being a great team. And to do that, I think they have to win in England. So mm. I think they've got a bit more riding on it. Mm. And I think when you have a mature side, that the Aussies have got combined with Travis Head and Alex Carey and Scott Boland who are new to the fold but have connected and done really well. You combine that hunger with this talent, I think that'll be enough just to get the Aussies' noses in front. And you know that England are going to play attacking cricket and you know they're going to want a result, which means that every game is is going to end in a result. So I, I think Australia will win 3-2 with every game having a result. That's an early yep. old prediction. Old prediction. Um, I like it though. But I hate it when they ask players, right, like, you know, and footy coaches – you know, like I asked Nathan Lyon, what's the, what's the series going to be? And he says 5-0 Australia. And people go, oh, that's a bit arrogant. And I'm like, what do you sort of expect him to say there? Yeah. 3-2? Yeah. Okay, yeah, well, which two are you going to lose? Yeah, yeah, I'm locking, yeah, I'm locking in losses. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm locking in the Lord's game, no chance there. They, <laughs> they smack us there. And Edge Baston, well, you know, that doesn't spin. So, of course, so we're not going to win. So, I'm not going to have any influence in the game. Yeah. yeah. It's like, you know, like we asked Holbrook as well. I remember we um, were chatting on SEN. You know, oh, you would have you taken – extra thing he goes well mate you know we set out to win every game you know the idea is at the end of the season we've won every game you know obviously if we're three from four Mm. would have taken that but if we've aimed for three for four and we've won our first three what do i tell the boys in the fourth game just (laughs) (laughs) let it go yeah get out in the gas boys you've done your job (laughs) we're three from four (laughs) job's done get pumped by 70. um so before we sort of wrap it up, I just wanted to uh, go ask you a few questions, I guess, around like the Australian team generally, who we've got. And again, it's coming out of the first test, so some of it will be like, mm-hmm. you know, your your predictions will turn out to be sure. true. Yeah, I'm yeah, sure. yeah. That's it. Just um, cut, cut the shit that is. That, that, yeah, that's work. right. Yeah. Don't worry. Yeah. Well, that's great. Give, yeah, that's great. Yeah. Give yeah. You, like, Why don't three, you give two answers? Sorry, yeah, that's what I was about to say. I'll give you three answers and just run the one that's right. <laughs> three, two, four, one, four, one and then Five Australia, now. England, and just add in, cut it in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three, two, Australia. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Scott Bowen though for Test One over Hazelwood has he done enough to yeah, for Josh I, to now be? The, yes, so yes, um, because Josh Hazelwood's only played four Tests in the last two and a half years. Josh Hazelwood's record is incredible. It's two hundred plus wickets at twenty, you know, mid twenties. But Scott Boland is ready to go, and mm. I think if you know, you know, you've got a great backup in Josh Hazelwood. They'll go through their quicks, I think, over there. So he'll get his opportunity, Josh. But I'd start with bowling while he's hot and bowling really well. Get him connected and doing well early on in the series. And I think his style of bowling, you know, Boland's basics, baffles, baseball. There you go. There's a prediction for you. Yeah. Use, that, use that as a headline. Clip it up. Yeah, clip that up. I've got a couple um, of headlines from this one. Pale so, style males and Boland's baseball <laughs> baffles. <laughs> Pale <laughs> style male <laughs> is <laughs> unbelievable. Yeah. Um, so I think the uh, yeah I think I think Boland to start and that's a tough call on Josh Hazelwood but I think he's just not had the the time in his legs to get there even though he says he's fit. Yep. Um, but I think he'll play a big part. Josh Hazelwood. It's no knock on him. He's a if great he was cricketer. fit now though, like mm. obviously, well th- apparently he's fit, but mm. I guess like is Scott Boland the is he ahead of Hazelwood now in the pecking order in your mind, uh, or is it still Josh's? Oh, got yeah, runs I'd, on the board? I'd go for I'd go for the experience, yeah. but I'd just start the first test with with Boland because he's had the form already yeah. and the overs, and and you know, and and then you've you make decisions around. So you've probably got two locks, Cummins and Lyons. Cummins, it's going to be a big ask for him to play all five tests, but I think he will, and I think he wants he's coming a little bit underprepared in his own words. Better that, to be that than over prepared. So I think he's ready to do all five to prove a point. Nathan Lyon, there you two locks. I think for all five tests, you play Mitchell Stark because he's got one of the best strike rates of all time um, as a fast bowler. He leaks runs, but he takes wickets, and he's four wickets behind Mitchell Johnson to go as our best left arm quick of all time. Yep. So he's got a lot to play for, and on top of that, his footmarks give Nathan Lyon something to bowl into. So I think Mitchell Stark's a lock, even if he is a little bit expensive. Looks like any, everyone's going to be expensive anyway. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, his strike rate, you know, is around 50, which is the highest, I think, of anyone to get to 250 test wickets. Don't quite wow, know is it? There you go. Yeah, so he's got a huge strike rate. And then you've got the backup of Michael Neese, who's been bowling well over there. Sean Abbott is in the in the midst. And Cameron Green, who we talk about, is six foot six and bowls 
as I said earlier, that mythological heavy, heavy ball. ball. <laughs> so, you know, he bowls 135 plus, yeah. or 85 miles, as, as Dude, I say. I'm, I'm going to be... Yeah. I'm gonna be using that heavy ball line. Yeah, Dude, the mythological it, yeah, heavy it, ball it, is—it's right. yeah, got its claws in the yeah. knee, mate. Yeah. Oh, he's bowling no. a heavy length. So this this young kid, heavy can't, length, heavy, heavy ball. length. Yeah, hard, sorry, hard length. <laughs> which I still don't know what a hard length a hard is. Hard length. Well, I prefer a heavy, a heavy ball, length. Heavy, well, it's a heavy, heavy, heavy ball on a hard length. That's right. perfect. And that heavy and that there can be length. interpreted yeah. by anyone <laughs> differently everywhere. So hard length. What's that? Well. Yeah. Figure it out, mate. Well, hey, you don't know. <laughs> idiot. You're an idiot, mate. How do you don't know what hard legs has been yeah. around since the dawn of time? <laughs> um, Wokes will play for England. He's got great. Uh, he's he's got great records at Edge Bastard and Lord. So he's an all rounder for the UK. Um, and Tung, Josh Tung. I don't know his first name, but Tung Josh played against. Josh Tung. Uh, that's. I've yeah. never. Heard, well, I've just never heard of an English well, player called Tung. Yeah. Well, he played. Um, oh, old Tungy. You never heard Tungy. of Tungy? Yeah. I know Alan Tung. Idiot. <laughs> yeah. Alan, yeah Alan Tung. <laughs> a, he's he's played for England. Chris, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what an all rounder. <laughs> um, so he's played one test and played against Ireland. Um, he's played 38, 48 first class games and nearly retired. He had some shoulder injuries, but bowls fast. So they'll have you know the Poms will have Tung, Robinson, Wokes. Wood, who we know is bowled mm. well in Australia, you know, bowls fast, short, yep. bowls quick, we were, and they got Anderson and Broad. We were talking about uh, the origin of last names the other day, and I just wonder what old Tungy. Oh, yeah, what, where's what, Tung? <laughs> what's he done to earn that last name? Yeah. There's a South African cricketer whose uh, last name was Zondeki. And his nickname was All Hands. <laughs> All Hands on Dicky. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably the best nickname. That's I've a great of. nickname. That's um, great. Uh, is Johnny Besto? Is he yeah. likely to get a, a run in? Yeah. Well, so he's 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 pipped folks who's been doing a really good job for him. Um, but uh, Bairstow had a horrific leg injury playing golf. Um, and Aren't they just non-stop playing golf, those bastards? Yeah, isn't that all they, they're doing? Well, horrific leg injury playing golf. Golf. I think he got like run over by the card or crashed Sounds the like a dude making like an that. excuse for playing like shit. Yeah, He's like, either oh, that mate. or you're completely hammered and you've got the <laughs> golf cart and you're like, you won't, you won't drive off the edge of the yeah. tee and you, you, <laughs> and you, you just, you do, just yeah. melt it <laughs> the side. Uh, but it, I, I mean, we'll take. It, we'll just say that he's. Uh, he's telling the truth. It was an accident. Yeah. Yep. So he's played ninety games. So he's pipped out. He fits the Baz ball mould. Um, uh, really excited at the back end of the series in Australia. He did really well as well. So he'll take the gloves. I think Folks is probably better gloves. But best though was faultless against Ireland. So he's he's got the nod um, ahead. Lengthens their batting. Uh, Moeen Ali we talked about hasn't played first class cricket for eighteen months, but is in the team. And then you've got the likes of uh, Pepper Potts, who's a bit bit bowling desk. So Pepper Potts. Pepper Potts. So Pe- that's, I'm pretty Pepper that's Potts mind, sounds like a James Bond chick who. Yeah, yeah. Gets well, Pepper Potts is the Iron her. Man. Uh, yeah, it's because I, I mean, no disrespect to Pottsy, but I can't remember his first name. But he's he's new onto the team. He's uh, he's uh, a teammate of Stokes, who said we need to pick this guy. He's just relentless, metronome length. You know, bowls full. There we go. Matthew, Matthew Potts. Potts. Yeah, I, I knew it would come to me. I knew it would come to me. So Matthew Potts. I um, thought his Christian name was Pepper. Oh, <laughs> yeah, Pepper Potts. I thought it was Pepper Potts. I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> I'm like, what? he sounds like a handful. <laughs> Surely yeah, yeah, yeah. I should have heard of Pepper There's Potts a bit going on there. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, he'll play. He'll be one of the quicks in the rotation with the England sign, but they've gone in bowler heavy. Um, spinning is their real department where Jack Leach has miss, missed out um, through stresses. But, you know, all in all, they've got – They've got all bases covered, um, and you know we haven't beaten him in twenty years mm. at home. So, uh, have I covered? Mate, you've covered, covered it all. Covered all your answers, mate. And you've done. Yeah. You have. You've done fantastic. You've been terrific, yeah. mate. It's been awesome. It's all been right, great. Well, I appreciate it. Um, Thank you for coming on. Yeah, no worries. Well, you know, I can now. The ramblings of a madman. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Yeah, it can come off with the toilet paper that I wrote that <laughs> on. <laughs> so you can use that in our bathroom. <laughs> out later. Um, but so all be able to catch on Channel Nine throughout the first. Yeah, how many? yeah, yeah. We don't need to plug Channel Nine stuff. No, but I mean, we're well, yeah. happy to happy to do it. Yes, but so you're yeah. not doing all of them. I'm though. only doing the first test, then off on a on a holiday. Um, you so I'll be in the UK. Bastard. Yeah, and no, I've been waiting two years. Spent a lot of money uh, on a holiday two years before COVID. When I got the sack, I was like, right, I'm going to book a really good. Which holiday. we had nothing to do with, by the way. Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> it wasn't your fault. Yeah. <laughs> Um, 
uh, and then paid for a holiday, but then like just got tried to get refunds, and they're only given twenty five percent back. Because I thought the whole world, I was one of the guys that was buying all the toilet paper and tin, yep. tuna, and you know, bought <laughs> and a all your money, all your cash like, was under the mattress. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just turn the lights off. And I'm like, who is that? <laughs> I went all, uh, yeah, went all doomsday. underground, yeah, yeah, doomsday sort of style. So, um, took me two years to. Uh, Save back up, but we're finally heading over. So amazing! How long are you going for? We're going for th- about 36, 37 days. Oh, doing a bit of France, yes. mate. Uh, best mate Linny's over there with his wife, who owns Budgie Smuggler. Oh you know, yeah, um, Adam Linny. Yeah, fourth, yeah, yeah, yeah so. he's over there. So catch up with him for a few days, and then does he live over there, Linny? Yeah, he's Linny, he's living there for three. He wanted to live longer, but Liz, his wife, fell pregnant again. I think they can only do short amount, and he wants to break into the French. You know, set up a French office and oh, okay. he's got one in the UK. I Did mean, you used to live with him yeah. in Manly? Was that like in the budgie yeah. offices? I was there with him when he first bought budgie off um, uh, a guy who was whose name skips me, but he was a political advisor to Kevin Rudd and he said, right, I'll, I'll sell it to you for X amount. And all of a sudden, all this product just turned up and my first job with him when I was living there was to send off the budgie smugglers. Wow. And he said, right, whatever the difference in postage and my cost is you can keep, which is about a dollar twenty-five per order. But the work involved in sending off four orders took about an hour and a half because yeah. you'd have to write on the package, you know, check whose address it is, write it in a book, write it on the package, and then go, you know, three k's down the road to the post office to send yeah. these three packages yeah. of things off. So I got, you know, and I was paying exorbitant rent at the time. I was like, and he's giving uh, me four dollars fifty off a week for his three pairs that he was selling. <laughs> yeah. So he's one of his first employees, and now he's. You know, I don't think you see a player in the NRL or thing. You know, anyone who gets dack, they're generally wearing. All the, wearing them. They're all wearing them. Yeah. yeah we so hosted their uh, ordinary rig last year at the Ivy. Yeah, 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 it was yeah. mad fun. But I saw him on a podcast the other day where he was like, he was saying that he they did an order for the royal family at one point. Yeah. Like just he was talking about all these crazy for orders. For the royal the, family. Yeah, like Mike Tyndall and shit all got on. Oh, sure, yeah. right. Yeah. So yeah, that's how you get in there. Tyndall's. Yeah, Tyndall's well, Mike was married to. Yeah, he, yeah, he married. Well, him. I don't think the Queen was rocking them. Well. That's what I. I mean, that's. I heard she died in them. Actually, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. a nice <laughs> pair of, died a, a pair of <laughs> corgis. Yeah. Yeah. Custom pair, yeah. custom, custom corgis. Corgis. Between the Queen and the one piece. Oh. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah. We'll say good day to Lenny for us. I will. Over there. I will. I'm sure he'll be. Um, I'd be bloody excited to hear that you bloke said good day. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure he will. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We might make his day. He might want to sponsor the show. Who knows? Oh, Get shit, some mannequins up in the background. <laughs> exactly. I've asked him and he said no. Maybe you guys might have better luck. He's <laughs> <That's laughs> the best man in his wedding. He oh, fuck. thinks what I do is junk. So, you know, <laughs> you guys seem like you've got it a bit more together. Uh, I don't know. It's an illusion. <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> Mate, thank you very much, yeah, Connor. It's been great to talk it, to boys. you. Again. It's great to see you have really – this is becoming something – Yes, great. Thank you very much. If I get fired again, fuck you guys. (laughs) (laughs) Could you two just not talk anymore?